Well, welcome to Roundtable Live for March 3rd, 2017. I'm Bear Taffy, joined by Northern Lion Mathis Games, Rock Lee Smile, and Maggie Crone. Welcome to the show for the very first time. Good to have you. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I Mag took time off of work for this. This yes. is a good segue from your last episode <laughs> when you guys were Perfect. saying, just give up on the streaming live people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. Well, I, I'm just one of those people who does it for fun on the side. And then I actually do it for a living for, for a company, which is like a really different side of things. Mm -hmm. When but you have yeah. a foundation like Maggie does, it makes it a lot safer. You are, let me, let me make sure I've got the list correct. You've got game developer, designer, community manager, writer, caster, show host. This is all by He's your own multi-hyphenate confession as well. <laughs> yes, I know. Wow. But, wow. Impressive resume. Can you can you go into a little more detail about the uh, the development side of things for us? Because I'm not I'm actually curious about that myself. What you, what you want to know about? Well, where, where where'd you get your start, more or less? Oh man, that's a long story. But I like it. To cut it kind of like short, obviously I've been a gamer for a really long time, and mm -hmm. I think all of us have always been like, oh, wouldn't it be cool to make a game? Well, I thought that, and I never thought it would happen. Um, but I got really involved in a game called Vanguard Saga of Heroes a long time ago, mm -hmm. and I got really big on the competitive realm of it. And so I started like kicking everyone's booty in tournaments. And uh, I was basically the world champion for all the servers. Damn. And I started getting noticed in the, in the community and someone reached out to me and was like, hey, we have a podcast opening. We were looking for another co-host. And at that time I was like, sure. And so when I go back and listen to my podcast stuff, I'm like, God, I was weird and awkward. <laughs> uh, but you know, like as you get more comfortable with it, um, we kind of got started getting noticed a little bit more in other realms, and uh, we were getting like 12k unique hits a day, which was freaking nuts. And people started noticing, and some of the developers that were working at Sony Online Entertainment at the time were like, "Hey, we we actually listen to your podcast, and we like your mentality. Like, you'd be a really good designer. You should try being a designer. We have some openings that are help opening for free realms." And I was like, "Man." I'll apply. I live in a different side of the world, but we'll, we'll go for it. And I got the job and now I'm here. That so, is awesome. Yeah. That is I'm a hell of like an origin that's story. The kid who was like, you know, passionate and loved it. So follow your dreams, peeps. It happens sometimes. You, you sometimes. started this off on that note of quitting Twitch or quitting everything for Twitch, ironically, but you have, man, you have championed yourself into this position. So well done. Yeah, and I was Kudos. going to school for healthcare administration and music theory. So that's what my degree's in. <laughs> and throw it on the pile of roundtable degrees. They are. <laughs> well, well, be on fire. fire. Yeah. <laughs> Good kindling. What do we got? We got the yeah, biology no, I'm like, major. I'm always like, the... I have it on my resume and I'm always like, I'm applying for... A, like a video manager job, right? Like, because right now I, I manage all video content for NCSoft. Yep. And I'm like, what does that have to do with healthcare administration? Nothing. But I have a degree. So. I like to think mine is still loosely attached to the major that I pursued because I have a communications degree. So, you know, I'm. And you communicate daily. I, I'm communicating well. And I think you that's all due to my college well. experience. That's right. Yeah. So I will good. say that some of the skills that I learned, I do apply to my daily life in regards to like the business aspect of things, like knowing economy and, and being able to work with like KPIs and analytical data and things like that that probably no one cares about. But those are things that I have to worry about on a daily day day-to-day -day basis working for a corporate company sure so. i like to think i could take my degree and use it to start a fire like in a survival game as kindling <laughs> totally i <laughs> mean those that skills would transfer that's what you've learned that's what i've learned over these many years <laughs> i think it means that you'll tough it out that's like what the, my degree means for me at this point is oh, like yeah, yeah. he did it like he started something and finished it so he's got like the bare minimum like foot in the door there so yeah yeah. It's a lot. I will say this. It is a lot of time management and dedication. And I think that if you can finish a degree, like those things are probably the top tier of those things. Cause like, I don't think a lot of people can put in the effort that it takes to get a degree and anyone who's going to school can probably understand those feels. I am, I am really glad we brought on a consummate professional here because we've been spending the last few weeks arguing over whether or not you should use paper or ceramic plates. And, you know, that's like our foundation as adults. So I'm ceramic plates, you, why are you using paper plates? You can't. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. the world. You're, wasting, you're wasting things. There's people starving. There's, again, but you could use it for, I mean, if, in your case, if you're Mathis and you're homeless or something, I don't know what's happening with that. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold like, on. <laughs> Home. You're talking about Rob, who's like in a prison in like Mosul or some shit, not me. 
Have you met our friend Rob? I was Maggie? joking. <laughs> it's, more stuff. it's more stuff. You need the paper to light stuff on fire. You know? Maybe Rob, the paper Rob, plates are better. Rob needs Why do we need to really throw good. Rob under the bus out of Rob nowhere? Clean up his room. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the right. thing. It's because Mathis, when something gets thrown at Mathis, Mathis is like, who do I redirect this to? Right, That's like yes. a That's, That's a developed <laughs> skill from being bullied direction. all your life. You just got to redirect that shit elsewhere. It's a solid defense mechanism. <laughs> We it got, works. We got a really packed show this week. I mean, my God, for all the non-shows that we've had through 2017 so far, we got quite the doozy lined up. So let's get into it. Uh, in, in addition to having Maggie Crone here again, thank you for joining us. We've also got quite the docket, including Twitch uh, beginning to cut their partners into game sales and getting, beginning into uh, beginning to get into game sales themselves. We've also got Nintendo. Of course, the Switch was released today along with Zelda Breath of the Wild. We're not going to delve into that conversation just yet as we want to have uh, Last Grey Wolf Austin actually, our, you know, our, our, our Zelda guy, to uh, come in here and talk about that with us as well. Uh, we've also got the new GeForce card, the 1080 Ti, NVIDIA's fastest card ever. comes with a price cut on their previous cards along with a price cut on the Oculus Rift in that controller bundle. So there's some good news there too. We've got the Xbox Game Pass, which is a big story. A new uh, Netflix-like subscription service that Xbox is uh, launching this coming month, along with Horizon Zero Dawn, big game launch. And finally, continuing on with our new segment, Game of the Month, uh, we're going to be doing our Game of the Month for February. That's good. That's good, man. That is, man, that is a lot of stuff. I'm excited. But let's begin. Let's talk about Twitch. Let's talk about the, uh, the new partner incentive with the uh, the the Twitch, what are we, what, do they have like a name for this? The Twitch, Twitch games. Twitch I thought games, uh, like that. Mm -hmm. Hit me with the details of this because I don't think I know them very well. Sure thing. Yeah. So this was recently announced. I think it was even this past few days. Uh, Twitch is going to begin to allow partners to uh, opt in to a program that lets them get a cut for game sales that they generate from their page. So there's a little graphic. I think uh, you know. Let me pull this up actually, so you guys can see this over on the stream as well. Uh, there's going to be a new graphic showing up underneath stream players. It looks like a little buy now tab. So, you know, you've seen a million of those. And then there's this, uh, they've got this weird point system associated with it as well. Do you guys, do you have any clarification on that? Or I'm, I'm not really sure how that works. Oh, are you that talking system. about like if you spend, for every $5 you spend, you get points you redeem right, for like yeah. a crate that gives you a random like or a, a seated like chat badge or you know something some kind of like, like that, emoticon yeah. access or something like that yeah so they've got like these little uh unlockable things that are associated with it too but primarily what the concern is is that they're going to allow partners to get a cut of those sales uh the opt-in part of this is actually kind of an important f facet too because while you have the opportunity as a partner to opt in to earn revenue from the game sales you I don't, I'm pretty sure about this. You don't actually have the option to opt out of this happening on your channel. I'm fairly certain that at this point they are going to be putting this on every single That was actually my question. channel. And I, I think it's partners mm. only, but I, I, I don't want to say for sure about so that. So it's going to be on your channel whether you like it or not. You just have to choose whether you want. You have to choose whether or not you want to opt in to generate a cut of the revenue for yourself which you know i, I imagine people who ha are having this forced on them would like to at least have a slice of the pie right so this is uh there's a couple of interesting points to be raised from here first of all just general impressions i'm curious uh maggie as a uh, as a non full-time streamer I'm, I'm curious about your opinion on this is maybe just a, a sort of hobbyist perspective do you, do you think you'll be op opting into this or you think is this really going to affect how the, how you stream at all uh so i think it might not affect me as much as it probably does affect like a full-time streamer um it does affect me in the realm of game development though because yeah, yeah. i feel that as a game designer i'm immediately like hey how can i get involved in this because i know there's from a streamer perspective, I know that I want to be able to make, you know, money monthly and know that I'm going to have good income. And I think that there's already affiliate programs out there and to have them tied into a program that you're already using, I think is always a good thing. I just think my worry is for partners in the realm of, let's say another program comes out, right? You no longer have that affiliation link with the direct company that you were working with you're working with twitch now yeah and so i know that already a lot of agreements already say you're stuck with twitch and you know you're you have to stream your gaming through that um depending on your contract with them and i think that like 
there's, there's kind of like two sides of that. So it's, it's really exciting, I think, from a game company perspective, because I want to get involved. I want to obviously hit the demographic. There's lots of people who watch Twitch. Uh, I want those people to spend money in my game and, and play my game. So why would I not get involved in that? But from the street streamer perspective, I think that it's, it's a no-brainer. You'd want to get involved in making more money so yeah. that you can um, advertise to the people that you're playing the game that you're already playing and make money through that. I don't see why you wouldn't want to get involved. My only worry is that one part is if Twitch doesn't end up being the thing that you use forever. Sure, yeah. You know? uh, and you're relying like, on that for your income. I don't like that it's on your channel one way or another. I, I, I would, if I don't want to be part of it, I would like it to not be on, on like my streaming channel because there's no reason for me then not to be part of it. And at that point, you're going to introduce an immediate bias into whether you think the game is good or not because the more right. you sell, the more money you're going to make and the more you want people to keep buying it. It just adds this really weird conundrum where I, I'd rather just be like, I'd rather fucking not mm -hmm. and just not have it there. Because even if you don't want it there, guess what? Twitch is going to try and sell them to your viewers one way or another. So you're shit out of luck. That's definitely but the... they kind of already do that anyway with like Twitch Prime and all of that. Like they already have advertisement all over the site, right? Yeah. So. That is definitely like the biggest red flag though that was... Uh raised is from the viewer perspective you know is is this going to taint the opinions of these twitch streamers are they going to just be you know intrinsically more incentivized to be positive about their experience when there's a benefit to it obviously my philosophy right now is actually like the, the cut if i remember correctly is 75 for the publisher or developer mm -hmm. 20 percent for twitch five percent for the streamer that sounds right. so what they're basically doing is just like slightly undercutting steam which is 70 30 with no streamer cut in so it is like they're giving developers i guess a reason to push it for one but also i think that it probably won't be a major source of income for streamers because it should scale with the size of your stream so i know th there is a concern that people are going to be like you know they're just going to sell out for all these games but I think if you consider like from a ten dollar purchase, every a streamer is going to get fifty per or sorry fifty cents from every single purchase. Mm. That's not really worth that much. Like even no. let's say you have like a hundred viewers, if even ten percent of them buy that, that's not a huge amount of money for you. And then if you have well, like four thousand big, big streamers, though, like it does become it. Like you said, it scales with like your viewership. Oh, I mean, so I agree with that. Yeah. The top but, of people are just making more. It's, it's the rich keep just getting richer, right? It's true. Situations. But I kind of feel like if you're already getting like, like thousands and thousands of concurrent viewers, like your subscriber revenue and like your, your revenue from advertisements and from Twitch Prime and from Bits is probably going to eclipse it. So, I mean, I, if you're getting like 15,000 concurrent viewers, I really can't see the logic behind like, I'm going to play this game. I don't really like and misrepresent it instead of just like, keep doing what you're doing and play whatever you like that that's been working for you but you say that you say that yeah. you just take a moment back think <laughs> about youtube and how it's grown and the integrity of some of those larger youtuber channel youtubers and youtube channels that we have nowadays so i think like there's integrity is always going to be a thing that is people are just you're gonna have to know who's being genuine and who's not and i think that those things are going to change throughout the years but I think there's going to be sellouts. You just, you have to know there are going to be like, of course there's a potential for that. If somebody's making money off of something, they're of course going to be like, yeah, come play this game and uh, click that link and uh, give me some more money. Especially if it's a multiplayer it. game, it's so easy just to get your viewers to jump yeah, in. Yeah, I mean, get them to come play I, with you, right? I get that, yeah. Yeah, like for us, like we're not that kind of streamer where we're going to try to exploit the shit out of our viewer base, but it's too altruistic for other streamers. I think there are streamers out there who'd be like, this is a multiplayer game. I could crank out like a few hundred tonight alone just by playing this. Let's do it. But what what does a few hundred dollars mean to like somebody who's getting ten thousand viewers per stream? Who fucking mean, knows? Like, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't want to say that like two hundred dollars is not a lot of money or something like that. But if you have somebody on Twitch who has like you know eight or nine thousand subscribers anyway, like they're they're making so much money that I feel like that's that's a drop in the bucket. Like at, at what point does like you say that? Like, <laughs> but then they still I'm on the other side of things. I'm on the thing I'm on the side where I'm hiring you peoples. Right, I'm yeah. yeah. YouTubers. I'm hiring I'm hiring people to tweet stuff. I'm hiring people to be influencers in their worlds. And I see them go, Well, I want ten thousand dollars for that tweet. I want sixty thousand dollars to give you a shout out in a video. Like right. it seems ridiculous to say like, oh, sixty thousand dollars that's a lot of money, right? But to them, you're saying, oh, that's just a drop in the bucket. But for them, it's like, oh, but if you want a shout out, sure, yeah, you have to give me that much, you know? And like, 
I agree, but also I'm like, <laughs> if, they, if they're the kind of person that's getting paid, you know, $20,000 to do a, a sponsored stream or a series of sponsored streams, I, that is the kind of thing that it, that'll motivate them. Like a couple, a couple of hundred dollars. Again, I'm not saying it's not worth money. I'm just saying if you're, if you're streamer X and a company is like, I'll pay you ten thousand dollars to pay my game that's or to play my game that's not very good. That's worth a lot compared to, like, I can make two hundred dollars by trying to build right? that yeah. game. Yeah. But do you think that they're going to keep it at five percent for some of those high tier people? Because I think mm. that the same thing has happened with subscriptions, right? They've given right, some yeah. streamers more of their percentage of their subscribers yeah. than for these certain, you know, ad revenues. So I'm wondering, like, hmm, is that going to change? So they say this is the split now, but is that going to always be the split? Is, is it always going to be 5%? Yeah, I mean, that's valid. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have no idea, but uh, I mean, I would love to see it rise, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty selfish. I would love to see it rise. What do you think about the perception issue, though, of having your channel becoming a storefront? Because it's sort of taking the focus off of the streamer and putting it 50-50 with the product you're technically selling now. We weren't necessarily selling something before we were playing a game that happened to also be for sale in parallel but now we're actively selling well let me shoehorn this point into there as well which is to say that like this is probably the first step toward twitch becoming a storefront just in general, right? right? And that, I think it's pretty yeah. logical at this point that they do. When do so. they get their own launcher? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's well, already they, happened. That's what's happening. Oh, that's what's happening. Oh, that's happening? oh I misunderstood. That, yeah. Yeah. I thought it was just going to be a link underneath your stream. No, it exists. It's already there. Oh, Jesus. And the other thing is that you you only get five percent on um, on qualifying sales, which right. we're assuming right now is going to be sales through Twitch and then like activated through the Twitch launcher instead right. of like buy it on Twitch and get a steam code. So, well, they've got to, they've got to control every facet of it. If this, they're going to get into this area of the industry, right? They, they have to be able to verify everything and through their own system. I think that certainly would make sense. However, it is just another launcher that we have to deal with, which totally sucks, but that's Maybe it'll price. be better than you play. Maybe it'll be better than you play. There's the bar. God, I, I hope so. Can't, can't I'm price. glad you're there with us on your yeah. side of the industry. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Anyway, I mean, to my point, I was a little bit conflicted because on one hand, I absolutely would want to sell pretty much every game I stream. Yeah, but yeah. on the other hand, I want to be the one that's in charge of how I do that. Yeah. And if Twitch is kind of stepping in in the middle and saying, well, you know, you're equally as important as the game you're selling. It just feels a little off to me, right? Is that... I, I don't know if I'm like, like, cause I, I'll admit that when I first read this, I don't know why, but I just had a little bit of a weird feeling about it, you know, like, and I, I even went so far as to say Twitch is doing so much good for us recently that it's making me think, okay, where's, where are they going to pull the rug out from under us? Right? Like, right. where's the catch? What's going on here? But I, I think this is just like, I don't know. It, it, it doesn't necessarily, uh, require this level of pessimism from me i don't think i i think this is just you well i i like your point though because you're you're making a point different from the overall point which is that it may be a little bit uh of a hindrance on your ability to properly play games considering they're making you do this you know like it, it's not a choice if you want to play the games that they're partnered for you're, you're going to have to have that little button underneath there that's not an option but at, in the overall, I think I, I, I've kind of just come to terms with like, yeah, this is the direction Twitch is going, and I'm just going to have to kind of get on board with that because it's going to happen. They're going to they're gonna get further into this. They're going to expand more into the storefront area. They're going to become more involved with getting their partners to, you know, be partners and get, in, get involved with the business side of things, I imagine. So, yeah, it's, it may be a little sketchy, but it's, I believe pretty or i'm pretty sure is just what I we think have someone to in chat to. has mentioned and i think we've kind of touched on this but not specifically is the fact that streamers are already kind of pushing people to buy products already right like oh, yeah, yeah. as you're playing something you're already like people are already buying that product because they're like oh bear taffy's having a ton of fun playing this game i'm gonna go buy it mm -hmm. now they're buying it because you are awesome and you're making the game sound awesome, but you're not getting anything back from that, right? And I think that this is going to really depend on how they implement it uh, to Nick's accord. It's going to be like, if, if it's just, hey, I'm playing this game and they're only advertising that game and it's very subtle and it's just there and you can be like, while you're playing, someone mentions, hey, what is this? I want to play it. You can be like, yeah, click my link there and it comes back to me. Like, yeah. it doesn't have to be super intrusive, but it depends on how it's implemented, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely.
I've, I mean, I've, people already have affiliation links. We already know that. I mean, it's, this is basically a, a next step to integrate it as part of the product. That was another point I was curious about. This isn't necessarily, you know, uh, that relevant to us, but there are quite a few people that use the G2A links, use the GOG links, the Green Man Gamings, you know, like there's a lot of affiliates going on already. This is probably going to sever those ties pretty substantially, I would imagine, because I can't, I, I don't expect... Only if the split I is still, worth it. Yeah, I still don't think... I mean, I, when I threw out that, like, 100 viewers, like, 10% thing, that was really just to push it to kind of an extreme. Because 10% mm. is a ridiculous amount of viewers to sell a game to. Like, to get to actually buy a product. I think that's ridiculous. Like, 10% so. of 10% is probably closer to what... Yeah, or, or maybe 1% of 10%. But, yeah. like, if I'm you... Like, I kind of have data. <laughs> oh, yeah. Enlighten <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> us, please. We're just... Okay, okay. We don't have I mean, to pull look, numbers out of our ass anymore. When we you have look at a nutrition know. funnel, you look at, like, at first it's impressions, right? It's, like, the first bit is, yeah. like, how many people come to your channel? You hit this many unique views, mm -hmm. right? Now, take that. You guys all know your unique viewership. Go down mm -hmm. and the people who actually come in and they stay and they're active part of members of your party, like, I don't know what your percentage is. It could be 45, it could be 60%. It just depends on like how many people actually stay part. Of, and I, it, it's going to vary depending on the streamer. Like you said, if you have a hundred viewers, I actually find that people who have a smaller amount of viewership actually have um, a higher, uh, a tr like, uh, CPA rate because of the mm -hmm. fact that those people are a little bit more, um, they're a community, right? Like yeah, yeah. It, it becomes a little bit more tight knit versus people who have 20,000 viewers concur concurrent. They might not have as many people who are dedicated to, the, to what they're doing. They might be like, oh, I hop in, I check it out. They're not necessarily going to click on everything. But the thing that they have is they have so many people, it doesn't matter, right? right. Because it could be 10% of their viewership and still be like 1,000 people or whatever that number might be. So I think you just have to kind of like look at the data of your own and then kind of like go down that funnel to figure out how many people are going to actually click on a link. And then from the click on link, it's like usually 60% of those people actually will make a purchase. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So. That is more than I thought it would be. I don't know. Mind, mind flooded Ryan. <laughs> well, no, I mean, <laughs> I was like, I still actually like, I, I mean, this is what I do for a living to some extent, extent is like, oh, yeah, of influencer course. relations. It's actually and, awesome. Like, yeah. Content creation. So it's like, but I'm on like a different realm of things. So I, I'm like heavily KPI driven, right? Can so you, I think for, you, I think you, you guys were even talking about last time, you're like, oh, I don't really look at that because it stresses me out. I'm like, I have to look at it. And that's why I'm stressed out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to jump off this because I think we could spend a lot longer on here, but we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, but that is very interesting. Looking forward to seeing what they do with that. Uh, let's go as I'm. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I still think. <laughs> it <be> just. <laughs> I, here's the, thing. The, the difference for me is that G2A is known to throw like, you know, four or five or even higher figures than that at, at streamers and big YouTubers just to get them to put the link down there with the affiliate store to begin with. Yeah. Twitch obviously is not going to do that. So, I mean, you have people like everybody knows the problem with G2A right now. The question becomes, is it worth dealing with the ethical concerns to keep getting like a pretty fat paycheck? And a lot of people say yes. I just think that this will be revenue, but I don't th like, I think it's still going to be subscriptions and Twitch prime uh, bits. And then somewhere in like the ad revenue region, you're going to have uh, Twitch or Twitch game sales, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I still think in the regards to what you're saying, they're going to change that percentage though, depending on the influencer. I don't know. Maybe not though. Maybe yeah. they will keep it even. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Going on to uh, Nintendo. Of course, something happened today. I, I think like there's a lot of people lining up outside of Walmart. Not really sure why, but yeah, uh, I went to Target to get a uh, to get a coffee this morning. Mm -hmm. I walk in and immediately. The guy's like, "Are you here for a switch?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> no? And there's like a ton of people. And Dude. there are other people like leaving. And I'm like, "No, I just want a coffee." He's like, "Okay," because we're out. And I was like, Wait, "How many did you get?" And he's like, "We got 10 I'm like, "You only got 10? ten? Good luck. Good luck." Are you telling me oh, that the Target greeter didn't go? What are you doing in Target trying to get a coffee? Because Starbucks <laughs> opens at 7 o'clock in Target. There's a Starbucks in the Target. So okay. And it opens before the Target opens. Maybe if he wasn't so focused on the Switch at the time, he would have been a little bit more off-put right. by Mathis' uh, position. But No, yeah, he was like, he was ready to turn you, turn everybody. He's like, get out, get yeah. out, get out. <laughs> they had 10 at a Target? Coffee. Yeah. Man. That is, man, okay, I don't want to... Nothing. The uh, the GameStop apparently uh, down my street only got outside of the pre-orders. Obviously, only got four. Oh my god! Why? 
Why? That's so, so weird. Okay, I don't want to. I don't want to start Nintendo. it off on a yeah. negative point, but it's it is so silly at this point, man. In the year of our Lord 2017, you can't <laughs> understock. It's like <laughs> send more units. Here's the problem, though. They uh, they they've understocked <laughs> and it's worked for them. Yeah, so, so like, like we I hate assume it, it's on but purpose it works. at this point, right? Just it's just yeah. to drive the hype engine, which is oh, it's so frustrating. What I don't understand is supply and demand, right? Like you know that people want something, and you you have a gauge of like how many. Pe I don't don't they have a gauge of like how many people are going to purchase it? I mean, they must have run the analytics on it and decided <laughs> that it's worth more money to not sell them in the long term. <laughs> I had hoped, Maggie, that it would seem more logical to you because we're all in the dark here. You've got the it's industry side chess. to try to make it seem I, logical. I, I, actually, I have no details really on like box products or things like that because mm. uh, the last time I did a box product was probably like a really old EverQuest 2. Okay, yeah. You know, like a thing. Because like ever since, I want to say like 2008-ish, box products haven't really done so well, so. I don't know how true this is, but I also had people on Twitter when I was tweeting about it earlier this morning saying they they could get in and get a Switch, but they had already sold out of all the Zeldas, but they still had Switches. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how does oh. that happen? <laughs> like, how does that, that like, is, Well, I mean, resellers happen? is the first thing that comes to mind, right, for Zelda. Just but buy all, they buy all the buy Zeldas and eBay them. Yeah, that yeah. makes, that's mm -hmm. true. I that's have true. all the Zeldas. That's <laughs> crazy i mean oh god i don't want to dwell on this for too long but like nintendo is encouraging that by under under supplying they they are absolutely encouraging that third-party seller market for people yeah, i'm curious like to... i'm gonna get ebay real quick i want to see like you just still what class, the nes classic still sells for oh god oh, yeah, yeah oh yeah that thing too jesus 164 dollars is the first one that pops up that is an expensive oh. raspberry pi <laughs> you right <laughs> Keep in mind, though, I, people look at eBay a lot of the time, and so you got to see the ones that have actually sold, not the ones That's that are true. just. That's true. Yeah, there's a lot of listings that are like for seven days they're going to be up at hundred. And they'll just bucks. they'll go away yeah. eventually. Anyway, uh, yeah, apparently continue. Zelda is a masterpiece, so let's get back in the positivity train, I suppose. Zelda's I haven't gotten awesome. to play it, but yeah. I'm it's, I think it's the only reason why I want to get a Switch right now. I feel like all the other games on it, I'm just like, I know probably some people are going to hate me for that, but like I just feel like none of the other games. For the product are really like exciting me i think there's a couple but they're just not out they're not coming out with launch of it so yes but I correct so, i am 100 percent with you the trailers of them and i'm like oh sweet they're gonna launch with them and no yeah no they yeah just tease me we're in that camp i think for the most part uh however i think like in the last couple of weeks they've made the case for day one switch yes, a arms. lot Everyone in chat, arms, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've made the case for day one Switch a lot more compelling. Uh, well, A, with Zelda apparently again being uh, God's gift to Earth, but uh, we have quite a few more indie titles that were announced for the Switch as well. Uh, Runner 3 is going to be coming to the Switch fairly soon from uh, Choice Provisions. We've also got SteamWorld Dig 2, which I like SteamWorld. is a good time. Mm -hmm. Ukulele, Runner's of course. exclusive, right? Is it? Yeah, I think it I believe actually it might is, be, yeah. That, like, actually kind of bummed me out a little bit because I wanted <laughs> to play that on PC. Yeah. But, yeah, those, the SteamWorld games have been pretty damn good. Uh, Ukulele will be coming to the Switch as well. You got Blaster Master Zero. Uh, the Blaster Master games were on the 3DS, I think. And uh, I guess that's just going to be the Switch version. Uh, Pocket Rumble from Chucklefish. I don't know much about that, but I've actually heard decent things about it. Uh, quite a few more. You got Stardew Valley coming on the Switch as well. You got Tumble Seed, which we've uh, spoken kindly of in the past. Exquisite experience. You got Overcook coming there. Escapist nice. 2, mm -hmm. Goner. Uh, Kingdom 2 Crowns, which I'm really excited about, actually. That's the uh, co op version of Kingdom that was cool. from 2015. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Dandara, which is a new one from Raw Fury that I actually am curious about as well. But that's, there's quite a few uh, indie titles that I did not know about until very recently, and that makes me happy. But yeah, I'm, I am still with you, though, Maggie, in that. The uh, the argument for it at the moment some is... Some of those are already out to, like, Goner and things. Like, right, some of them yeah, are, so quite a few honestly, still... you can, like, if, I feel like this is going to be similar to my my feels on the Xbox stuff when we start talking about that, but mm -hmm. it's like... I, or, I, oh, most today? of the games are ready. Sorry, I accidentally yeah. muted myself. Oh, no, I'm it. with you. I don't think there's there's really anything on the console, right? If you don't have a Wii U... Like, obviously, pick up a Switch for Zelda. Mm -hmm. But if you have a Wii U, I find it difficult to to really find an excuse to buy a Switch right now. 
uh, yeah. come you just find holidays. it difficult to buy a switch in right, general. Yeah, exactly. right. well, so. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, like it's, it's, it's hard outside of like maybe by at the year's end when you have arms, Zelda, Mario Odyssey, and like obviously a Nintendo first party stuff that's lining it a little bit more. Yeah. Um, outside of that though, I mean, there's not t- too much for it right now. The- yeah, I think a lot of the, the big driving force on the Switch is just kind of like, it's the new thing, so everyone needs to buy it. Which Nintendo has been on top of, you know, for many generations now. It's sort of like a new Apple device. Everybody just wants the new Nintendo thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, they also didn't really talk at all about if the Wii U version of Zelda was any good. I haven't seen anyone talking about that at all. I want to hear you the talk only about thing- that. I yeah, yeah you're, I know you're going to talk about it. Mm-hmm. I'd say the only thing I've read about the Wii U version is that it runs worse than the Switch version, but other than that, it's pretty much identical. So let me well, hear I can't like... speak to whether or not it runs worse than the Switch version because I don't have a Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did. I actually went out to Walmart at three o'clock last night just on a lark in case they had one left. They said they actually had them until one thirty, so it's just a little earlier. I could have grabbed one. Uh, so or were well, people just uh, like lazily walking in, just like you, around one a.m. Yeah. Hey. I just went and grabbed Zelda on the Wii U. I was like, you know what? I'll take a chance on this. Mm. Nobody's talking about this version of it. Maybe I'll at least be informed. Um, And the dude didn't even know what it was. I was like, (laughs) can I get a copy of Zelda for the Wii U? And he's like, "Uh, we've got Twilight Princess Remastered. (laughs) Like, no. And I pointed at it, and he's like, no. Oh, that one. (laughs) (laughs) All right, yeah, let me, it was very confusing. So let me hear your uh, <laughs> let me hear your surface level impressions because again we gotta wait to get to the in depth yeah. stuff until we've had a little bit more time. So no spoilers here. Obviously, mm. I did play like literally twelve hours of this since I, I picked that it up crazy, at like four a.m. and I've been playing it almost nonstop with a couple of breaks in there. Mm. I had to do some errands for not having any sleep. Oh yeah, I'm a (laughs) my sleep schedule is super broken right now, so I'm just kind of riding the wave of that for the moment, like Mathis. Yeah, we got these two. It's just it's a fucking. I'm trying to use my time productively. If I can't sleep, at least I'm playing Zelda, right? Yeah, that's that's true. Mm -hmm. Um, so first impressions uh, were essentially oh, it's the it's that gameplay preview that we saw at E3. Uh, doing that for a while, yeah. And then I got off of that plateau at the beginning, and it's like, wait a minute you serious? This game is like a million miles long in every direction. It's like the biggest map I've ever seen, uh, both vertically and horizontally. It's got like some of the biggest scale that I've ever seen. That's awesome. Which is nuts. Like it's kind of like Just Cause or like a Far Cry, but Zelda. And then you get into these shrines and there's like over a hundred of those and they're like little portal test chambers. And surprisingly, and this is the thing that was the biggest change for me is a lot of the puzzles that I've found so far are entirely physics-based, which is an entirely different style of game than I would have expected from prior Zeldas. Mm -hmm. It's usually like hit a switch, shoot a thing in the eye, uh, push a block, like that kind of stuff is Zelda. This was like building uh, towers out of ice, out of waterfalls, and like making marble mazes, which is really weird. (laughs) I really didn't expect that. And they also give you almost all your powers in the first two hours of the game that I found. Like, there might have been more later that I haven't obviously gotten to, but they gave you the majority of things like bombs right away. And you don't even have, like, a quantity of them. You just psychically create bombs. That was was one of the big things I was hearing. I think I read it actually in uh, Jason... I always say his last name wrong. Voorhees. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Jason Schreer? I thought it was Schreier, but I think it might be Schreier. His Kotaku review, like, he was mentioning how, like, in most Zelda games, your uh, sense of progression is defined by unlocking things as you go. So, like, you'll see areas that you can't access yet and think to yourself, oh, i got to make a mental note of that so I can come back here and access this later and have fun with it once I have the right item. But with this, it's, like, the opposite, right? Yeah, I mean, there are still things you got to find, and there's also some things that I wasn't super happy with, like the way the loot system works with constantly changing out weapons. I, yeah, well, I have a question about that. <laughs> yeah, they kind of No Man's Sky did a little bit. Like, the first many hours of the game are exclusively dumping stuff out of your inventory, which isn't fun. You know what the worst part so, of that is? Is you say uh, they No Man's sky it, and I don't know what you're referring to as far as, like, how they screwed it up. Like, I've oh. got, like, three different things. <laughs> Sorry, I was referring to the what I think to be the biggest problem with No Man's Sky, which is the inventory system okay, being yeah, yeah. always full. Right. So, I have a I question like for you. I that's the problem with Resident Evil 7. 
Mm. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've hit, I hit that in Resident <laughs> Evil 7 a couple times too. Um, but I've, I've seen a bunch of reviews praise it's like weapon breaking system and constantly having to sw- switch weapons. But all that reminds me of is Dark Cloud and how much people fucking hated oh, it in yeah. Dark Cloud. Yeah. Why is, is it better in Zelda? Because people are loving it in Zelda, but they hated it 10, 20, not 20. I don't 10, understand what argument there is for it being a good system, but I would be open to hearing those system arguments. Uh, like, I, I am not interested in that style of gameplay, honestly. I didn't mind it in Dark Cloud. I, no? This is a weird argument to be made for my position on it in Breath of the Wild, but I didn't think it was that bad in Dark Cloud. So, it's know. not just weapon degradation like you're used to in Dark Souls. It's like you can hit three enemies and they break. Yeah, and the weapon oh, just, okay. it's gone. Hmm. E- and even the like high class, like higher tier secret kind of weapons you get out of a treasure chest, even those will break after about four or five encounters. Hmm. I'm just, I'm very curious just because I, I want to play it. Look, like the game still looks good. Like yeah. I, I really want to try it out badly. But with an open world game like that and removing the Zelda progression system that you're so used to of going into a dungeon and getting an item that will help you in a further dungeon, I feel like the progression then should be loot that you get and finding these awesome weapons that will make you a badass for X amount of time until you find a new weapon. Right. Like but now that they basically, right? Yeah, or Borderlands, or Witcher ask where you're just yeah, constantly yeah. getting better weapons or replacing the ones you get. Even Witcher's breaking weapon system was a pain in the ass. I hated it. Um, so I'm curious, like now that all your weapons break, like you can't really get attached to any particular gear. Because it's oh. just going to be gone. I have to hope that somewhere deeper in the game, maybe there's a different way that augments that system. Maybe there's a more maybe. permanent weapon that you get to keep, or maybe there's a way you can repair weapons. I mean, I'm still almost at the very beginning of the game, despite having played 12 hours of it. A lot of exploring. I've just been opening up the map just to see what's out there and not like doing anything in the map. Um, I've met a couple of NPCs and I was able to open up some inventory slots, so... That's at least a little helpful, but still, I only got to open up two of them before the dude left. <laughs> so I, I've been avoiding There's combat. There's probably a lot of like dungeon stuff and exploring that you haven't done that unlocks some of that cooler stuff. That, yeah, I have to hope that. Or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just at a, a superficial first glance, that's sort of like the thing that I've taken away from it is like, I just don't want to be involved in combat because I hate the weapon system. Mm. When you talk about durability, like, I don't know why. I've been playing a lot of Minecraft, and all I keep thinking about is the durability of the shears at like the first level. Right. Shears, shears, and I'm break. like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, durability. I just never liked in any game. I mean, I did. I love The Witcher. It's one of my favorite games, but I fucking hate the durability system in that game. It yeah, I'm trying me to think off. of a durability system that I actually enjoyed, and but I just. People- Liked it in Zelda, and it kind of was like, why? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, like, I don't make an argument for it from Dark Cloud as like it's a good thing. It's just like, I mean, it was okay. It didn't, you, yeah, it, you didn't hate it. Didn't it. hamper my That's experience, true. right? Also, what odds do you give me of Nintendo flagging us if I show Austin playing this <laughs> in theater mode? Yeah. Yeah. Austin in theater mode, though. It's even it's like a small no, screen on a small matter. screen. No, no, all right. All right. No, people said you have to like avoid star. logos. You have to avoid <laughs> any <laughs> noises. Like it's it's ridiculous. It's just the all right. The Nintendo none of that. claiming bot. Yeah, none of that. Uh, so I wanted to mention, though, so that was sort of the bad thing. The other bad thing is I find the controls are very overly complex. And I did try it on mm. both the Wii U tablet and the Pro Controller. Both felt a little off. And, and not, like, irreparably off. Just, like, it needs to let you map the controls the way you want to because it just doesn't make sense that some of the buttons do two different things sometimes than not other times. And then you need to hold down, like, do this weird claw with your hand to hold down another button. To yeah, the, the claw, the claw, yeah. The slide over on the, the left claw, analog well. stick. It's, <laughs> it's just unnecessarily complicated, and I think there's a better way to do it. I don't know what that is necessarily, but it's, it's a little awkward. Yeah. Sorry if I'm Have picking you your brain. Have you ever played Dark Souls with a uh, keyboard and mouse? Cause, uh, God, that, no. That's, <laughs> that's like someone that. just took their face and they're like, let me just <laughs> smash it on my keyboard. And there's your hotkeys. Go for it. <laughs> Like what? <laughs> uh, so let's. Sorry, not, to, I, I want to hold you back if you're going to ask another Zelda question because I want to. I'm going to ask one more Zelda okay, question. Okay. Do you find the stamina system annoying? Because I hated it in Skyward Sword. It's sort of give and take. Sometimes okay. it's annoying. Sometimes it's fine. Uh, you start out very limited, and you do get to upgrade it. So I'll just right, say cool. that. I guess. All right. I'm eager to check it out. I still want to mm-hmm. play it. So. Uh, and before we move on, I do want to say that the game does generally play pretty well. Uh, it doesn't look fantastic. It's got some kind of grainy issues. The draw distance has some problems sometimes, but it also looks beautiful sometimes too. 
Uh, in certain situations, there's a lot of stuff, phys uh, stuff physics-wise going on, and it will destroy the frame rate. Other times, the game <laughs> plays mostly fine. Um, ultimately, I think where I'm landing, and granted, 12 hours is not like the whatever, like 300 hours that I'm probably going to need to see most of the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, in my experience so far, it does seem playable, and it does seem like an okay version of the game to get if you really want to play Breath of the Wild and you don't want to buy a Switch. Um, I don't regret the purchase, and I will probably play a lot more. Mm -hmm. So, cool. cool. Uh, that's just kind of the the bow on it, I suppose. Awesome, sounds good. Uh, yeah, so there's the switch stuff. We'll be talking more about that. Uh, well, actually, uh, yeah, next week is PAX, so more on that later. But yeah, we'll figure out what we're gonna do there. Uh, let's talk about the new GTX 1080 Ti. Not much to really talk about here. More more to the point that uh, there's a new card that is really really good. Uh, which made all the other cards cheaper. So, hooray! Cheapy, or, uh, the cheaper cost of PC hardware is a win for everybody. And uh, going along with that is also the story of the Oculus Rift dropping its price by $200, which is actually a very yeah. uh, right on time, story. Right, right? Yes, exactly. Good. <laughs> Didn't we think there were no more ways that the Oculus Rift could make me sad? <laughs> I had come out the other end of that dismay, and now we found a new way. <laughs> but, you know, to be honest, uh, I, I'm actually glad that it dropped in price. More people are going to be able to get the touch for a reasonable amount. Mm -hmm. And it's a really competent, decent VR setup. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, there you go. HTC Vive. So, yeah, there's. does the $200 <laughs> price cut make this, like, an insta-buy over the Vive? I think now that the touch exists, yes, because almost every game works. Mm-hmm. My Makes opinion, sense. no. But you got to you got to defend that. I use <laughs> both of them, and I feel like the HTC Vive is a better, superior product in all the senses of like the way that I experience the game and the controls and the way that I set it up in my house. Like all of that, all of it combined together, I feel like it's just. I, I know it's more expensive mm -hmm. to some extent if you if you get the full setup, but I, I don't know. I just like the product better. Do you think it's the uh, the controllers themselves, or do you think it's just like Valve as a whole just understands VR to a finer point? I don't know if that's necessarily the case. Um, maybe I, I don't know like what's going on in the back end of that, right? Like yeah, I yeah. I'm kind of new to the VR world, but um, the past two months I've just been playing a lot more VR games, and I love it so much. I'm just trying to convince my boyfriend to be get in on it. You gotta uh, help me, me convince my, like, all these core, guys, because yeah, I'm like me and my core group of friends now that like they've got like at, at first I was really because I get really motion sick and I've, mm. I've never been really motion sick until now mm. I'm, as an adult, which is really strange. And uh, I guess the more that I played the last few months, I've just been really really liking it and just having a lot of fun. And I don't know if it's because I'm surrounded by like cool people that I'm also playing with, so I'm not That's alone right. uh, playing by myself. But uh, I've definitely been enjoying it a lot. Yeah. I'm excited for this as a another step closer to the uh, the idea of VR becoming a lot more mainstream. I like I I love that my enthusiasm my enthusiasm for it is being backed by the industry more or less continuing to go down this road because I feel like at any point we could see them say like well okay VR isn't working let's just wait a few years and see if maybe the market picks it back up again but that's not the case you know like valve is going really strongly into it in fact like with gabe newell's recent press thing he was mentioning how they're now working on three full-fledged vr games not just gimmicky stuff but they're working on the real deal and we've got you know these price drops coming the new graphics cards are inherently going to make it a lot more accessible for people just because not only does it make it easier to run that sort of a gear but it also makes it easier to get in on the ground floor when the cards are becoming cheaper, you know, for every new generation. So it's awesome. And I'm... now they have like tons of laptops that are super accessible for yeah. VR that you can play on to. Um, and my only thing, I'm guessing you're talking about the 1080 Ti. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. talking about, yeah. I think like that product is good if you, if you are doing VR stuff, but I feel like it's not like that drastic of a difference from the 1080 because it's only like a 25% increase. So it's really not that big of an increase to make an upgrade. Sure. Yeah. Opinion. So. Uh, it just kind of depends on what you have in your in your PC right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, and you're you're right, but like the the thing I'm most excited about from that is mostly just you know it's getting cheaper. Like that that, that is it's still yeah. got to be, and you know I think it's by admission of 
uh, the Oculus people as well, it's it's got to be the number one thing turning people off to it, right? Is the cost of admission at this point? It's still just yeah. It's 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 an enthusiast only device with its price point is the yeah. problem. I think and- I feel like if you wa- if you want to get into VR and you're like kind of new to it, I actually think the PlayStation VR setup is probably oh, yeah. the easiest to get into, and it's probably cheaper. In in retrospect, I don't know. That's my opinion of it, and mm-hmm. what I think would be the route that I would recommend to if one of my friends was like, "Hey, I'm curious about it." Have you played what games have you played on the PlayStation VR? <sighs> I'm trying to think of like oh. I, I'm so bad with the names because I don't know all the names because like they're really weird games. Like one of them is like I'm adventuring and I'm like shooting bows at skeletons and random stuff and there's puzzles. I don't know all the names. Oh, of them I think I, I know yeah. that one actually. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, that it's might called be Vanishing Zelda in VR. It's kind of like <laughs> no, it is. It's totally like Zelda, but in VR. Is it Vanishing Worlds? Links cross. Yeah, Vanishing Worlds. Vanishing Worlds. <laughs> yeah. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Vanishing Worlds yeah, is actually really super cool. It's yeah, yeah, you should play it if you haven't. Yeah. Um, it's I don't know. I like how immersive it is and it's kind of kind of cutesy art so it's not the yeah. greatest like high res but it's it's pretty fun mm-hmm. uh did you by chance play the batman one on the playstation no. vr no you i didn't. definitely okay. will have to check that out mm-hmm. i've heard good things about that too uh but yeah this is uh again just a, a gush moment for me of hoping that uh someday soon we're looking at v2 of this <laughs> I, I i would love uh, to see another it. week of Talking about VR, it's like the last seminal <laughs> VR game coming out like nine months ago. <laughs> Dan just to... wants us to have a roundtable wing in Elite Dangerous. <laughs> yep, the right. landscape keeps getting better and better. There's, there's a lot of not VR changing. stuff, man. It's like people aren't paying attention They're to not. it, but there are VR games coming out. Absolutely. And I got to admit, now. like to your point, Bear, about how you're saying, like, what if this is like getting cheaper? Maybe VR is just like being delegitimized or maybe the industry is going to move on. There's a part of me that's like, is this like the Battleborn moment for the Oculus? Are they about to oh, jump off the cliff? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I see, yeah. Rip, Battleborn. Sorry, uh, Battleborn. I don't mean to throw you under the bus. It's a good game. It's just, it's you know. It's such a good game. <laughs> I actually I do so like that. so bad for them. Like, such a good game. I just feel so bad that, like, they just got crushed by Overwatch. Yeah. yeah. I want to. I, I want to hear you talk more about that if you have further points, Maggie. I'm curious about about the whole Battleborn versus, versus Overwatch, Overwatch thing. I want to hear it from the industry side. From the industry side, I feel like that's got to be really rough. I mean, I don't know what it. I don't have like a ton of friends that were on that side of things. I know some people who work over there, but yeah. I don't know like inside details, and I wouldn't share those even if I did. But I think that from a perspective of a developer. It's really rough when you put your whole, your heart and soul into a game and that there's so many moving pieces that are in that and so many people's jobs that are online um, that no matter what your product is, right? Like you're putting, you're putting all that time and effort into it and money and that's a lot of people's jobs. Like it's just really rough. Yeah. You, you always hope that when you launch a game that it's going to do well. I mean, you can never, you can predict how well it's going to do and then something like that can just come along and just crush you and you're just like, well, now I... You know, yeah. I think that a smart choice would have been to kind of look at the products that are going to be launching around the time frame that you want to launch your game and choosing smart launch times is probably going to be the, the key thing that the only problem is that there's so many games launching all the time. Like it's hard to, when, how do you decide like when to launch it? Right. Yeah. And it's I you just throw a wild card at you and be like, Oh, we heard you're going to launch here. Now yeah. we're going on our launch date. Right. And you're just, uh, this is going to sound really out of left field, but the fact that horizon zero dawn launched right before Zelda. And I know this, they seem very disparate, but they're both giant open world character action driven games about a confluence of old fantasy and new school sci fi. Yeah. Like, those are very specific themes that came together in this one spot in the space of a week. Yeah. It's like an illusionist prestige kind of thing all of a sudden. Maybe the secret ending is they're both in the same world. Oh, there you go. There you go. Damn it! Why'd you have to spoil? I'm gonna throw those. I think the difference between those two is they're hitting a different audience of people. Not necessarily like the two people. The two types of audience aren't playing the same. They wouldn't play the same game. Mm. But they're more like single type player games where you can like buy it and then play it when you want type of thing. Yeah. Instead of where like Overwatch and Battleborn are really multiplayer driven, so you're gonna have to have right other people to play with and it's rough when all your friends are playing overwatch you're like well i guess <laughs> yeah yeah i think I- any pvp oriented game and competitive oriented game that is directly derives content based around other people is going to be hard 
Especially I mean, if you're for honor. <laughs> See, like we're going to have a little bit of a for honor section later, whether you like it or not. So we'll <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Uh, let's talk about Xbox Game Pass. So this is the uh, this is the part before of the- we talk about that. I got a bone to pick oh, with the Xbox shit. One. Okay, oh, all right. I don't know if it's because Your Netflix I- machine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know if it's because I just like there were literally like two years when I didn't turn it on, yeah. and I'm not trying to start this circle jerk of like you know, was there anything to play on it? It's more just like I Halo. It- Halo and that's it. Halo Halo too. That was, I'm disappointed in you. I so disappointed in you. I'm just gonna say that. But like I didn't turn it on for two years. What happened happened. And now it doesn't like to turn on. Like every time I turn it on, it goes like, you know, hey, we're not gonna turn on. Turn us off and turn us back on again. And then I turn it off and turn it back on. And after like six attempts, it's like, all right, now you can get to Netflix. It's actually <laughs> bad at getting to Netflix. I can hear it now. Dude. Just being like, oh, now you want to turn me on, motherfucker? Exactly. I, like, I 100% agree you know, with Ryan, you. No, Ryan, it takes a little time. You've got to like, <laughs> You can't just go <laughs> for it right away. You can turn it on so Dude, quickly like that. No, trying you, to start it like a lawnmower. You're but. right. <laughs> You're right, though, man. It's it kind of is a p- big old piece of shit. Like it, the longer I have it, it seems like the worse it does it navigating through its own dashboard, which doesn't seem like a problem it should be having. But like every time I boot it up, I feel like yeah. I have to restart it to actually get an app to launch. It's ridiculous. There's a there's a sunk cost. Like I I was probably never gonna get my money's worth out of the console, but I was like, you know what? It's a Netflix machine. I can live with it. <laughs> right now, I'm actually like it's less work or at least less annoying to hook my laptop up directly to the TV with an <laughs> HDMI cable and it is to turn on the box and then hit the Netflix button. Yeah, that, man. This is like a gross uh, misunderstanding probably of how this is actually working, but I'm just, I'm imagining this is an incredibly powerful PC that's attached to your TV and yet it can't run its own 2D UI. <laughs> yeah. What? Like, how does that happen? Anyway. Imagine the OG <laughs> Xbox 360 is that red ringed. Yeah. After like two years. I feel like it's some kind of like, uh, also, like security on the Xbox One is a lie. My wife is like, (laughs) my wife is a 95 pound Korean woman. And I am not a, I am not a 95 pound Korean woman. Yeah. In case that's not clear. So they, they let you sign in with like your connect silhouette. Yeah. They, will let me sign in as her without me even asking to sign in. They're just like, hey, Kate. And I'm like, "Eh." yep, you got me. (laughs) You got me. It's Kate. Glasses, no hair and all. Yeah, it's it's a spitting image. So, like, I don't know. I don't mean to just – it really could be because, like, maybe the circuits just degraded or atrophied somehow for not being burned on. You can yeah. open it up and find out what's wrong with it. Yeah, oh, I don't want to do more work for Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Xbox Game Pass got announced today. It's a new <laughs> subscription service on the Xbox One. Again, all games I already almost own. <laughs> for $10 a month, subscribers can play more than 100 Xbox One and Xbox 360 games via backwards compatibility, a list of, included, or a list of known included titles, uh, Fable 3, Gears of War Ultimate Edition, Halo 5 Guardians, NBA 2K16, Payday 2, Soul Calibur 2, Mega Man Legacy Collection. Not a lot of surprises on there. Kind of what you would expect as far as the... Soul uh, Calibur 2? The old Xbox <laughs> catalog goes. Yeah, the man. Old, I mean, that's all Soul Calibur 2. There's just peppered surprises. in there, yeah. <laughs> Our, my, my other co-worker and I were both like, I really like Soul Calibur. But I was like, I already own it, though, so why would I... Yeah. Play? Like, that's the thing is that, like, most of those games, other than, obviously, Halo and Gears and I think a few other ones, like, there are already things that you probably already own and are playing and have played mm-hmm. in other platforms, so... I don't. Oh, no. I don't mind this as as an offering. I think it's. I think it's decent. Like I, I think there's quite a few people who probably don't have a very expansive library that may be inclined to do something like this. You know. You know, one of my coworkers made a good point on on that. Is he was saying that he thinks it's good for maybe like the younger crowd of people who maybe haven't played those games because oh, yeah, they are yeah. a little bit older. So I think if you're like more family oriented and it's kind of like an easy thing for you to buy and trust that your kids, okay, there you go, you got like a hundred games, go play it type of thing. So I could see that perspective. I'm just 
I'm not in that perspective, nor yeah. do I want to have children. So, <laughs> <laughs> I at least ten bucks is a decent price for it, right? I mean, yeah, it yeah. Be a lot like, I can understand it for a family, right? Like, it yeah. Makes sense. yeah. I can certainly think back to like 12 year old me. That's obviously a much different time now, which is weird that that's a 15 years ago and B so little, completely, little bear. <laughs> <laughs> completely disparate to the current Before bear landscape. was a bear, he was a cub. He's a little baby. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like, you know, just going to Blockbuster and getting one or two games a month yeah. at most, you know, it was like, that was the extent of my experience. So this would have been great for me at that age to be like, oh yeah, I can play a hundred video games in a month. That sounds fucking awesome. Let's do it. So yeah, I, I certainly see the value in a lot of circumstances for this. And it's, it's sadly like you start off by doing the, the ripping on Xbox bit, which is completely valid in my experience too, but this is more or less like this is the the exciting stuff coming out of the Xbox front. Unfortunately, with the with the news from the other domains, it's a little underwhelming. But <laughs> this is the exciting stuff. It's like yeah. it's like their their exclusives like got canceled. <laughs> That's yeah. the problem. Oh, like literally <laughs> one exclusive got canceled. The one that everybody was looking forward to. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I mean. I, again, I don't want to just go down the circle jerk of like yeah. Xbox One is bad, but like if your console works, then that's a start. <laughs> but, Isn't that the opposite of a circle jerk? I don't know. But... A, like a jerk circle? <laughs> it's a, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah, that normal works, actually. We're, we're a circle of jerks. Totally makes sense. I, I just like I, I, I just want it to turn on properly. <laughs> <laughs> You're setting a really low bar for You're it. Yeah. Yeah. Low bar, low bar. Maybe that's why I'm not an, as annoyed by you play as everybody else because I'm like, well, it, at least like on the third attempt it works. Whereas <laughs> Xbox, it's anywhere from the first attempt to like the 15th. So, You know how I was going on and on about how I wanted to move all my rock band stuff over to Xbox One and then that was like the primary oh, yeah, reason yeah. I wanted to get one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I finally got around to doing that the other day oh, and it, it turns out you can't move anything over except for Rock Band 3. No. None of the DLC, none of the uh, uh, with Rock Band Network. <laughs> no, like, they... the whole point, they just stopped supporting it. Oh, it sucks. Or it's, I guess, still in development out in space <laughs> somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> they gotta get another GoFundMe to get that working. Oh, yeah, I can't really complain because, like, they sent me the whole kit and everything for nothing. But it's like, yeah. I really was excited to play my favorite songs again on this. <laughs> I miss that, man. Did you ever get into right, Rock Band no. back in the day, Maggie? I... Uh, I didn't really get into it as much, but I do have the set, and yeah. um, a lot of my coworkers were. They are really into it. Um, I was like, I'll play my real guitar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Show them I, up. Mm -hmm. I was an elitist in that sense, but like, I, d I have played quite a bit of rock band. Hell yeah. Um, and that, that was a tangent. I mean, that wasn't Xbox's fault. It wasn't Microsoft's fault. It was a Harmonix, really, but... I just I call just it DDR for my fingers. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Xbox Game Pass, it, it's just a general good thing, even though the Xbox One doesn't work. All right, here we go. <laughs> let's, uh, let's do the doozy here. Let's, let's go with Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, Nick, if you haven't played it and you haven't bought it, buy it now and play it now. And that is, that's it. <laughs> that's done. Right. Over. Segment the show's done. done. Cool. Good shit. Tell, tell me about your initial experience, Maggie. I, it's gorgeous, first of all. I think it that is. that's the first thing that everyone's going to say is you mm. come in and it's beautiful. Um, the gameplay kind of reminds me, it's like, it's a mix of various different things, but I, I, I like it. I think it's fun. I think it's straightforward. The story's really neat. Uh, so far, I have lots of questions. Um, I don't yeah. want to spoil things, so I don't want to ask the questions here, but I have lots of them. Um, I have not played probably as many hours as some of you guys have, because I, I, like I said, I have a full-time job, so I haven't gotten- Wow. Jesus. Because <laughs> 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 I have job, things to do, do I so. I meant a full-time job that doesn't let me play games, um, well, <laughs> games of my choice, I guess, is, the, is more so the case. Um, so I haven't gotten to play as much, but I think um, it's definitely fantastic so far. Mm -hmm. 
I, I love the look of it. I love that they had the foresight to include a photo mode as well so I could just gush over it for hours because... It's really pretty. Oh, it is. It's a good-looking game, man. It blows me away that they can make games look this good on the PS4. Uh, I tweeted this last night, but apparently this runs on the uh, the new engine that Gorilla made for Until Dawn. Uh, and uh, Kojima is going to be using that in his new game as well. Uh, I forget what it's called. It's the Dissidia engine or something like that, but... Yeah, yeah, so this is this is a brand new engine that they've recently made, and it definitely shows because holy shit, this game looks fantastic. Beautiful. You know, I gotta say the foundation of what I think makes the game for me is, in addition to the stuff you just mentioned, the premise itself is enough for me to actually want to get really involved in yeah. it. Uh, it's rare these days that you come up with a premise that's like, oh, that's actually kind of unique and also mysterious. Uh, you can usually kind of figure things out in about 10 seconds of reading the story beats. And this one, I kind of don't know where it's going, and I'm excited to see, which keeps me involved. I mean, that's like the most obvious thing, but it's just so rare. I feel like the last game that gave me the same feels that this game is giving me is Journey. And I don't know how many other people have played that. I but love Journey. If yeah. you haven't played Journey, you can literally play that game in 45 minutes, but it is 45 minutes hello we're spent like oh, it yeah. is such a good game and i think like it gives me that same vibe not only because it's beautiful but because it's like really thought-provoking and even though that game has like way less content i think like it just gives me that same feel like i, I don't know if i'm gonna be satisfied at the end of this game because i don't know what the story is like at the end so i can't give you like the overarching mm -hmm. feel but so far i really really like it it's gonna be a cliche and predictable comparison, but I I got a serious Skyrim vibe the moment I began walking out into totally. the open world. Like I I, yeah, I got that, that moment where there's a waterfall. Like it, I was like, this is mm. Skyrim. We're in Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, like, it really gave me that that sense of wonder that Skyrim gave me five years ago. Of like, wow, this is a beautiful world that I really want to explore. Like this is really in engaging and interesting and the character like Aloy is great I love Aloy I think she's a fantastic character perfect lead for this can she just be my bye Brian <laughs> I think I found my <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's excellent I love uh yeah all the characters you mean at the start the voice acting is really good exceptionally good uh, I think Ashley Birch is the voice actress yeah. for it and I've actually watched a couple of her interviews uh she does time uh Tiny Tina and a couple other people. So she has some big names mm -hmm. underneath her already, but um, she's just like the way she talks about how she gets in, how she got into the character and how she feels about the character and the story and like um, the voice that she was looking for, for the character is really cool. So That's definitely awesome. worth watching a couple of those interviews if you haven't. That's cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the, the writing of course does assist that as well. Like all the characters, they, they, they absolutely seem like they belong there and they have their role in what's going on and it all feels completely you know believable it feels like this this world exists without you and it's extremely satisfying to, to, to just see to just partake in it's cool i love it uh i could gush more unless anybody else wants to take the stage <laughs> raising i feel yeah. like i talked a lot <laughs> sure uh I, I, I'll chime in because I've played a little bit of it so far. Sure. I want to preface this by saying, chat, relax before I say anything. <laughs> oh, oh, here we go. When is it coming to uh, PC? No, no. Mathis no, game. Uh, that has nothing to do with PC. <laughs> oh, no, I think I the agree, game. Mathis, it, will, it would be so good on PC. Oh, of course yeah. it would. Oh, I agree would be with so you. Much. You could play it at way, like, it would be. It would look so much better. I booted, it, I booted it up, and, like, 30 minutes in, I was like, wow, these hair physics look great. I wonder if it's NVIDIA. Yeah. And I went to the start menu, and I was like, oh, wait, no, that, that, that doesn't make any sense. They did a great job, though, for it being on PS4, though. Yeah. Like, it yeah, would oh, be yeah. so much better, but it looks really nice. Mm-hmm. I agree. What were you gonna say, Mathis? Yep. The game is gorgeous. It's good. It's a very good game. The, the world is intriguing as hell. I actually really love this post post apocalyptic world yeah, that they've yeah. got going. The robot animals are just really cool. The, the combat is really good. But for me, the issue lies. It's a good game. It's a good game. I'm <laughs> laying that out there. It's Mathis, do you think game. it's a good game? It's a great game. Yeah. So yeah. Mathis thinks it's a good. It game. is. It is still. <laughs> no different than most of like ubisoft's open world games it, it trods the same the same paths of climbing towers and collecting things and doing side quests it's that like don't really lara mean croft. anything i think i think i agree with you like the gameplay is like lara croft oh yeah, yeah they, the gate the, the gameplay for me is like it's good gameplay but it's nothing it's the same we've done it a thousand times and 
maybe because I've, like I said before we started the podcast, like I've played this style of game 30 or 40 fucking times over the past five years. And like, I'm just kind of yeah. sick of this same open world formula that we get again and again, which is what I'm afraid of when I'm going into Zelda as I, I well. I gotta tell you, you're gonna see it in Zelda too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's my, that's my fear is I've like been that. climbing radio towers in Zelda. <laughs> I, literally, I mean, they're not literally radio towers, but they may as well be. But. <laughs> it's a good game it's just for me i i got bored of it after like five or six hours i'm like i've i've played this game with different skins before the last open world game that had this formula that actually hooked me for a while was actually shadow of mordor because they had the nemesis system on top of it mm. and i was like oh that actually makes right. that formula a little different and i can play but, this for longer the but... slow-mo head rolls Oh yeah, that's oh, the was great. I still okay. I still haven't played Shadow of Mordor, and everybody keeps talking about the Nemesis system. Can you like just you quickly it. summarize? I know I definitely need to play it. I need so to the play Nemesis it system is, is pretty simple. Your character can't die like through the lore. When he gets killed, he'll come back. Yeah. Uh, but if a random orc kills you in the game, it'll do like a zoom up. It'll give him a name, and he will now exist in the world as a captain who killed you. Right. And now you have like a vendetta against him, and he can go up in the ranks and become more and more powerful. Or you could like control him and enslave him and make him your uh, slave to do your bidding. It's just like a cool. It adds like um, it adds like a layer of uh, emergent storytelling. Yeah, in a triple A game. Sure. Yes, that's where Dick fuck the Donk Smasher. I mean, <laughs> <comes from. laughs> yes. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's it's a shame because I I think I would have loved this game five years ago, like before I played a thousand Assassin's Creeds and every Here's other Ubisoft thing, open world game. The fact that a game like that, that is this, so similar to all these types of games, it is, you're naming all the games that I actually, while we're playing it, we were all naming all of them. Is this, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, we even thought at parts, like it kind of reminded us of Firewatch. So I think like hmm. being able to like compare it to some of these really, really awesome games within those, those genres, that's, that is great that it can do that after so many years, right? Yeah. And I don't know if uh, it's because some of us haven't finished it yet. Maybe we're going to change our minds as we play through it. Um, but I think that's kind of like a cool, refreshing thing to see that somebody can make a product that's similar to all these products and it can still uh, revive the the heart of what gaming is for people, um, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I feel like we've done the same thing with MMOs, right? We've, we've seen a million of the same MMOs, but when are we going to get that MMO again where we're like, oh, this gives me, like, the EQ feels, right? Or, oh, this gives me oh, what yeah. it felt when I was playing Ashen's Call, or whatever yeah. Whatever that nostalgia is for you, right? Yeah, to echo that sentiment, too, like, I, uh, well, Sam Strippin, we all know Sam, uh, actually uh, tweeted this about his experience with it, that, like, games like this, they kind of have to charm you to to really get you invested enough to go through the motions. Like, especially, Mathis, like, if you've played 30 or 40 of these games, you know, like, you, you've... You've got to have kind of a, a better intrinsic reason to want to move forward than the 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 gameplay cycle, right? Because yep. that's not as satisfying to you anymore. And I I think this game has that charm, honestly. And I I, I think it's mostly the 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 presentation, the character. The, well, it, no, it's it's really not even mostly anything. It's like it's the fact that the complete package is, like you said, is so incredibly well polished. Like they do everything really well and on top of that they take the elements of all of these incredible games that we all love like the witcher and skyrim and all these wonderfully renowned open world experiences they they take a lot of the best elements of those games and they do them extremely well in this like it's it's a lot of things that, we, that we've seen before like you mentioned just done in a unique and interesting yeah. way and done extremely well yeah and uh, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm a, I'm aware that it's a good game and it's a it's a polished game. I'm actually more excited that Gorilla, uh, the developer, actually finally has like an amazing game under the belt because like the Killzone games is what they're mostly known yeah, for, yeah. and those are like, eh, you know, they're all right. Um, but I'm excited for them to actually have like this really landmark title under their belt. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's my opinion on Horizon good. Zero Dawn. Good. I could. I really could go on for a while. Honestly, like I'm. I'm pretty infatuated with this this is i the last time i really remember feeling this excited about a game was probably the witcher 3 which you know i, I think we're all kind of on the same page there too how many hours have you put into um only six or seven for horizon you sorry i cut you off horizon right you said six or seven yeah mm -hmm. okay so i i need to do more i'm probably gonna play more tonight in fact but i've been doing it on stream so i've been trying to keep myself from playing off camera. I don't want to 
Dude, open anybody. world games, you can't play them on stream. I know, I I'm starting like, to learn just, that, man. They're it's... too much. <laughs> yeah. There's too much content and in these them. two or three hour blocks, I'm trying to play through this game, and it's going to take me like two months to get through the goddamn thing. So yeah, it's, it's going to be... trying to do a YouTube That's series on Skyrim. Like, how? Yeah. <laughs> it's like trying to play through The Witcher 3 uh, once a week, three hour stream. Yeah, I don't know. You did Fallout, man. Well, props to you. you. You knocked out Fallout. GTA New Vegas, also. Fallout 4, GTA 5, Skyrim... Yeah, you do all the sandbox games. I don't know how you do it. You, know, you just ignore trick, a lot of the like, side yeah, stuff. Exactly. The side, storyline. Mm -hmm. If the side stuff's good, I do it. But in an open world game, you know, you play tennis once. I'm like, I don't need to play tennis every every 15 minutes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. is a different I story do. though. Well, yeah, because you get cards and stuff for that. So mm -hmm. I also don't care at all about 100 percent com completion. Like, if anything, yeah. I wear it as like a badge of shame. So. <laughs> To complete a game with like eighty <laughs> percent completion is pretty much like my platonic ideal for an open world game. You, you and Greg Miller are like the complete opposite in that domain. Though. He's like he's all about getting those platinum trophies, and you're like, all right, here we go. That's well, too much. Uh, Northern Lion, the completionist channel, as, gonna start as a gamer with a full time job. I don't have <laughs> time for that sort of stuff. <laughs> no, I mean you make a good point though. I think that what happens in those open world games where like you really want to play it, but as like a streamer or a YouTuber the what do you call it like the interest rate of those people how how are they going to oh, stay there yeah, for, yeah. Play mm -hmm. for 180 hours i mean it depends on how invested they are in it right exactly. i think ryan not to jerk you off but you do a good job in, in keeping the people entertained that way you get silly like in jokes that will run the whole thing like the dad squad from new vegas yeah. right and yeah, just yeah. keep that keeps them entertained because bringing people into the dad squad and it just it's funny for the stream if you can have something like that running through I think it's a good way. Yeah, you, Thank you, you Mathis. Thank you. you. <laughs> no problem, baby. No problem. <laughs> You're definitely right, though, Megan, that, like, I, the the general uh, – I yeah, I really don't have a word for the, it either. The like gist the, of the, the core gameplay ultimately culminates in minutia. Like, after you've seen um, the majority of the narrative of the story, like, you do the same loop a hundred times in slightly different contexts. And if you don't have something to say over all of that, you're essentially just broadcasting – copies so yep. yeah yep. you gotta have something to bring to it i uh, okay uh but yeah i'm we... never gonna live that down i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> with a full-time job I comment bet that my full-time job doesn't let no me yeah we're, no we're just mining it for humor now <laughs> <laughs> No, like every time I'm like, oh, I haven't finished the game yet. The chest just like full-time job <laughs> 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 all right uh let's get into me gushing more about horizon in a different category of conversation Stop. all right that word i will not <laughs> it's game of the month time game of the month oh, yeah. for february boys and girls our uh game of the month segment the new thing we're trying to do to uh, get a a better gauge of how we uh how we like games throughout the year and let's do it, man. We need no further explanation. Let's start with, uh, well, let's start with Maggie. Maggie, what was your favorite game in February? I'm like going back and looking at like all the games that I played in February. Do you keep in <laughs> mind that Horizon Zero Dawn technically released on February 28th? Can I call it my favorite when I haven't gotten to play it that much? Oh, absolutely, I you like... can. I call I call Pit People my favorite game of January. I played like two hours of that at that point. Okay. Also, like version zero point zero that. in the early <laughs> access. Yeah. <laughs> I would say that right now, Horizon Zero Dawn is the best game that I've played in February. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely a fantastic all-around game. Like I said, it has graphics, it has gameplay. I know the gameplay isn't super unique to anything, but it is definitely a gameplay that's solid. Um, it doesn't bring, I haven't run into any bugs yet, so that's, that's nice. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think overall the story and the character progression seems really cool. I, like I said, I just haven't gotten to the end of it, so I don't know. If I'm still going to share those feels, it'll be interesting to see what I think about it when I get to the end or even the middle. Yeah. Um, but right now, I'm definitely loving that game. It's fantastic. So I would have to be my game of, game of the month. Hell yeah. Uh, Nick. All you? night. Easy. I'm uh, still working on the 100%. I'm like 86% through it now. I've got 30-something hours. On your, working on your badge of shame. <laughs> I don't see it. <laughs> I like it. I like the completionist stuff, personally. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I am I literally are badges in that. So if you want to look at it that way, I guess. Uh, just a fantastic platformer, Metroidvania in general, possibly one of the best, in my opinion. Um, I still hold it up there with Ori in the Blind Forest and Super Metroid. Like, I think it's actually that good. 
Yeah, I heard Absolutely. you talking about this last episode, and it did look really pretty. Yeah, Orion the it, Blind Forest is so good. Oh, yeah. I mean, I like teared up at the beginning of that game, even. Mm -hmm. Like what? Also, and I stuck what's what's flat. really getting me too is the the sort of parallel story that's coming out now in the sort of post game, because I got an ending, and then I kept playing it for an additional ten hours, and now it's sort of going somewhere else, which I'm yeah, very interested cool. in seeing where that goes. Uh, plus, there were just like a ton of more power ups that I didn't even know were in the game. Uh, just like new NPCs I missed and all kinds of, there were, I think there's like three or four zones I never found. So the game is freaking massive. And for 15 bucks, like you couldn't really argue with the, the value per dollar uh, if you're interested in that kind of game. Plus oh, yeah. the soundtrack is fantastic too. You should get the soundtrack too with it. Mm -hmm. 15 bucks is not favorite. bad. Ryan, how about you? So <laughs> I know where this is going. Yeah. For Honor is my game of the month, and it's a really good game, and people are sleeping on it because the experience overall is pretty mixed. The game is great, and I'm not trying to just... <laughs> we're asking, the game! <laughs> we're asking what is the product of the month? What is the best thing to buy? Yeah. It's a different spectrum. The actual gameplay of For Honor is like... I'm so into it. I, I, I mean, people make fun of me for how much I played it, but I've only played like 18 hours since launch it came out like three weeks ago. That's a lot for you though, man. It's, it is a lot for me to invest in a it single game. At this much, point but yeah. So like I'm, I'm very into for honor. The game is great. And I wouldn't be surprised if it was like on the top 10 of, of my year at the end of the year, you play is horrible. <laughs> the decisions that they made to balance the game around gear and to focus oh, on dominion mode and you know, stuff like that is, they're really short-sighted, but the actual one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two -two gameplay is amazing. So Did you played through the single-player stuff at all? No, and I played through the first mission, and I was like, "It's, it's garbage. <laughs> it's really bad." <laughs> yeah, like, it's not I was just curious about your opinion because you you're clearly a fan of it. I, I like the game, the combat style. Like you mm. said, it's really good. I want to see it in VR. You no, know, I'm gonna keep saying. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is gonna be one of those games that, I mean, there's two, there's two ways I see it going. One is that um, Ubisoft supports it and it kind of gets like a, a better reputation similar to Rainbow Six Siege, or people forget about it. And then in like eight years, I'm gonna be this guy with like, with get off my lawn sort of discourse where I'm like, I liked it when it came out. And everybody <laughs> else is like, why didn't they make a sequel to that? That was really cool, but underappreciated at launch. It's like, like me with two human. I never <laughs> like anyone that liked that game. Mirror's Edge or something <laughs> like that. Like Mirror's Edge came out, people were like, "I'm not spending sixty bucks on this. It's only two hours long." And then four years later, everybody was like, "Oh my god, Mirror's Edge was the most creative IP ever released." Hardcore. Yeah, I'm like, talking about the sequel. And then they made the sequel worse. So yeah, like, <laughs> I really need, like. You know what we need? We need. We need an open world in Mirror's Edge. That's what we need. Do we? Uh, I'm with you actually. For the open, no, that's what they did in the second game. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you. For Honor is probably my game of the month of February. There weren't that many games that I played. I fucking hate For Honor, but I love, I like For Honor a lot as well. Uh, for the, all the reasons that you kind of listed, you play as garbage. Dominion is garbage. Gear is garbage. That's so many parts of the game that are garbage. No, so many parts sucks. So many parts of the product <laughs> is garbage. It is a bad just, product. I think you see the potential in it, but not the that actual is, product. Yeah, the game. I, I see the game. The game. The, the, game. Game. <laughs> the gameplay. I think is great. There's just a lot of nonsense around it. I think this is like a game where I'm like, it's the sum. It's more than the sum of its parts, as opposed you know, to. Brian, as you're saying that, like. I mean, I'm curious what the development team is thinking. I mean, they obviously have to be looking at the feedback. I'm sure the community manager is compiling all this. And what you said and what Matt has said are things that I've heard from, like, so many people. So I'm wondering if they're, like, going to take all of that and come back and be like, all right, this is a new mode that I think all of you guys are going to like. And maybe it'll be, like, 2v2 map or something. That'd be well, sick. They need, like, know. a final destination map. Yeah. yeah. They need, like, well, a, a map with, with no, no ledges, no spikes, no well, that's geysers. That's what you guys are telling me. It's like, everybody that's complaining no is just complaining about everything but, like, the one trusted, honorable version of Actu combat, No, right? actually playing it yeah. in one mode is fantastic. But that mode is, like enough it's not like uh you know wario where you're just doing paper planes over and over and being like this is a good use of like 50 bucks but <laughs> I, I really think that chad had a good analogy and that, that matches my feeling basically is like it's really good food 
in a restaurant that has like shitty clientele and decor and no parking and it's not near mass transit and maybe it's like, <laughs> you're making it a lot worse like but the food is really good and paper plates and and exactly paper plates. <laughs> i think when you when you actually get into it it's all worth it in the end and the fact that it's uh that the stuff that is bad at least you can recover from that. Like you can't take you a, a eat, game. You just take a bite out of it and you're just. Exactly. You from all of that, right? Mm. <laughs> you can't take a game that's like poorly designed, but presented really nicely and be like, oh, well they can make it better. Like that, that game is screwed. It's, it's fundamentally flawed from its genesis. For Honor, I think is a great little nugget or pearl in like a, clam buried in manure at the bottom of the Marianas Trench. Like they could, James Cameron could pull it out and then they could make it better. Will they? I don't know, but I, it's a game. Make for honor great again. No, it's <laughs> I, think that, I think that like the thing is that like the moment to moment gameplay is just so good that we'll see what they do on the macro gameplay for it. Yeah. yeah get rid of the macro. Gameplay. Yeah. Get rid of the macro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have done, um, they've already done some stuff. Like they've, people were like, why, if I only want to play one V ones, why, or one V ones times the number of players that I have in my party, why am I doing this like deathmatch mode that you have to queue for to also get into that? So they separated out the deathmatch mode where you respawn from like the survival game mode, which is like, duh, but <laughs> like at least they've done it. So I hope that they're looking at this and they're like, we have something good. The player base has dwindled, but not as much. Yeah, I think how as is it now? It's not bad. Like we, you don't get queue for very quick. long. Mm. Yeah, but like people look at the graph, and I'm so wary of like, you know, we go, oh, it's lost seventy five percent of its players in three weeks, which every game it, does. Exactly. Without context, what does that matter? Like it could be yeah. worth. That, that could be really bad, or it could be great, especially considering how strong February has been. But um, there's like a lot of um, there, there's a lot of things to improve, and I hope they they find it worth investing. We'll see what happens because I mean they're a huge company, but the Wildlands comes out in like four days. So God, Wildlands has failed to impress every time I've tried to play that game. Oh really? There's a man. huge group of people who are real into it though. I so. like it a lot, it's, man. I want to yeah, play more. Yeah, we're gonna see how that goes. All right. Here, come play the division with me. I'll play that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of the same. Well, I don't know if it's, how many of you guys yeah. have gotten to play uh, Player Unknown's Battleground. Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm like. I'm worried about like where, what is their space in all of this? Because it's so similar to like H1Z1 and like, I mean, it gives me more armor feels than anything, but I'm also just like, how do they think they're going to compete? I don't, I don't know. Mm. That, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of that whole genre. To be like honest. survival, so survival like, uh, FPS. The King of the Kills are not, not my cup of tea, to be honest. Mostly because of the... Too, actually. Yeah, yeah. It's just the downtime is crazy for me, man. I can't, I, I can't handle it, but yeah, clearly the, it's... Downtime, you just leave when the game is over. When you die, you leave. Well, I, I'm talking about like when I've got a squad that I'm, 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 I'm teaming up with, of these, oh. of these clowns, these jokers, and I, I jump in a game with them and I die in 30 seconds and I spend the rest of the time waiting for them to clean house and win it's like you just need to get good. good there that's yeah. the problem and that's the problem with for honor too is that i can actually see with for honor that that is definitely a good game however i suck at it therefore it sucks oh, it brings the salt out <laughs> that's of me probably so entertaining bad. to watch <laughs> i rage so easily with self for honor it pisses me off i heard him all man in the semi-finals I, I i think that was getting to you a little bit wasn't it you got a little oh, bit of yeah. that old Golden i was two sick rage. of fucking his goddamn eroji bullshit <laughs> <laughs> There's just something about like, you know, beating someone really, really badly in this video game. Like you're not, you're like, you're overpowering them. You're outsmarting them. Mm -hmm. And you're like, they, we both know it. Like it and happens to you sometimes as well, but it's yeah. very like. Or there's the other man, side where you and I are doing twos and then, you know, they kill me they, or you kill one of them. And then the dude reses his friend after he's dead and just they tag team you. It's like, oh, this is a good time. It's, it's war, man. You know, <laughs> it's, it's total war. war. There's no rules. Bring out the mustard gas. Like. Who's, uh, <laughs> who's, who's dominating the territories right now, man? Who's got control? 
See, no. that is another thing that is just stupid. Oh, and yeah, who gives a shit about Somebody it? should have like just been like, don't things, do this. Right? Yeah, like the, That's the, the meta game. Yeah. The swords come down, and then the axes come down, and then the other swords come It's the just katanas. a thing that stops you from getting back into a match. Exactly. It's like, there's no point to it at all. You, you should haven't not played for you. seven hours. It should not take you 30 <laughs> seconds and, like, 12 clicks to get back to the queue. Like... Yeah. The game is great. Stop putting up like these barricades. Like as far as I'm concerned, that game needs like four menu options. Right now, there's like a hundred, mm. but it needs like play, <laughs> dominion, not dominion. How many players are in your party? Like we're good to go. That's that's it. I don't care the vi. Oh, the samurai are gonna take over the Viking lands. Like it, it has no meaningful they impact. Should just have like a ticker, like a news ticker at the bottom. Oh, there you go. Yeah, oh. absolutely. I'll see the percentage. You know there's like yeah. 10 people out there who are really into it. Like, yeah. that's their life. Yeah. They're like that guy at PAX that was so into oh. the battalion. Or the, the people at, at E3 that were like freaking out over Persona 5. Yes. Like, they're, okay. they're super fans. A lot of people like that game. Yeah, we're not... I don't want this to become yeah, a list Mavis of fuck hell, you no, for liking this it. thing. Oh, my God. Just, my <laughs> example's being taken out of context. Out. I'm like, all right, just what? back into the bus here. <laughs> no, yeah. Be, just fuck Mathis. It's all yeah, Mathis. There we go. Uh, speaking of which, that is your game of the month, right? Is For Honor, Mathis? Yes, okay, yes, yes. Cool, cool. So For Honor canonically must be the well, game hey of the now, month. Hey now, so. hold on. We got, we, we've got a split decision here because I Yeah, myself, it's 2v2 right now. Um, well, no, we got actually. Hold on, we got we got. Way one. to throw your vote away, Nick, <laughs> by got, giving an well, honest choice. <laughs> <laughs> if this is democracy, yeah. no, I'm just so I've I got, voted independent. Sorry, I've got some sway here though because I, while I have not actually played Hollow Knight myself, I have vicariously experienced a handful of it, and I definitely no. know I like it a lot already. However, uh. I want to give an honorable mention real quick to Neo because I know none of you have played it yet, right? Or Maggie, have you played Neo? No, I played it. Oh, you did play it. I've, okay. I've watched a lot of it because um, I watched Co play yeah. it a lot because mm -hmm. I I've been watching it while I was at work. It looks it looks interesting. I I'm, I'm really surprised you guys didn't want to jump on that train because you guys have been a lot more into Dark Souls than I have in the past. So I figured this would be right up your uh, alley. Uh, however, that requires me booting up my PS4. yeah. I know, man. It's you so know, damn hard. It's funny. I saw so many comparisons to Dark Souls, and I found that the combat played a little bit more like a Legacy of Cain than Dark Souls. It's a little bit more hack and slashy. I can't although say I didn't get super slashy. far. Yeah, yeah, it is. I can't speak to Legacy of Kane, but I, I can say that, yeah, it's a little less Dark Souls-y as far as the combat goes, but, like, the overall theme, feel, and, you know, as you're progressing through the world, it yeah. definitely gives you that vibe. Uh, but Neo is extremely good. Man, we are getting a lot of very, very good games, which is awesome. Extremely exciting. Uh, but Neo deserves some praise, some love here in February. However, I do want to give the nod still uh, to Horizon, because, like I mentioned... I really have kind of become infatuated with it, and I, and I don't get that experience very often anymore. With how many games I'm playing these days, like it, it, like Mathis said, it kind of just can easily become another run-of-the-mill experience, but I am, I'm intrigued with this. I am really invested and interested in the characters and the story. I want to see what happens. I want to see what Aloy's deal is. I want to see what this world holds, and I want to explore more of it, so I... I'm really enjoying it. I'm looking forward to playing more. So yeah, Horizon gets the nod for me too. 2017 is going to be an interesting year. It I'm is. Excited. It's already an interesting it's year. It's so front loaded. What if there's just nothing? Well, we've got Red Dead at the end we're, of the year, right? We're hitting so. like, this is like the peak of things is going to happen. Yeah. So is we got a lot though? going on still. We've and got... then December is another boost whenever people... Rhyme is this year. Uh, Chasm's supposed to come out this year. I mean, not AAA, but yeah, stuff we've I'm got... excited for. South Park... Oh, God, yes. The new yes. South Park, of course. We got uh, Nier Automata is coming out pretty soon on PC. Nier well. Automata is coming out PC. That's so yeah, exciting. Yeah, that is really exciting, too. And then we got, of course, the Super Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild here. We got Wildlands coming up soon. There's a lot of <laughs> Mass Effect Andromeda comes out Mass in like Effect two Andromeda. weeks. Jesus, God, yeah. I oh, want to be excited about that. These are all I like, think about how big yeah, all these you. games are. These are all huge games, man. Like, Neo is massive. Ukulele, yeah, shit. Like that probably won't be like wow. a big game, but not you know, 
what this is is we're reaping the benefits of all of these projects that started five years ago. They're all hitting at the same moment. <laughs> They're all finishing. And now 2018 is going to be barren because nobody's yeah. working on anything anymore. They're all being finished. No, there's always a new project going to be yeah. started. Yeah. I will let you know. There, <laughs> most of those companies end up having like 20, 30 products that just get thrown away and then mm. they keep cycling through. So. Mm. Uh, don't forget new Shadow of Mordor in August as well. Oh my God! I am Damn. excited oh, for that. That's I'm literally gonna... the first I've ever heard that. Actually, oh, you didn't least, know? Yeah, uh, this week, mm -hmm. and then they were like, "Well, we might as well just announce it." Yep. Oh. Shadow of War. Shadow of War. Sorry. Injustice Shadow Two is coming out this this year too, and I'm excited now, for that too. Well, okay, I don't really. Know. You're not excited for Injustice Two? I liked Injustice One a lot. I, I liked like... Injustice as well, but. To be honest, I don't think we me. should really have a positive opinion about anything that hasn't come out yet. So that's you know, you true. We don't want to rack up the hype right. machine. We can I just, just say want... that we're excited, okay, Bear? Don't ruin our happiness. I just want to point out they're throwing the shade at me because I'm the guy who's always like, well, you know, it's just a trailer. But yeah. then when it came time to predict the meta score for Horizon Zero Dawn, all these people <laughs> were like, "Oh, it's gonna change the world." We're like, "Oh, I think it's gonna be like a 72." And I was like, "That's that's got 88 written all over it." And it's at like 89 right now. You called it, yeah. Wait, did. was that me that said it's going to change the world? Because you're mischaracterizing me if that's the case. I might have said that. I might have oh, said okay. something like that. Mining it for a little. It's going to change uh, the okay. world just like uh, The just Last like Guardian Just like Last Guardian did. did. That's right. Did you play oh, The Last Guardian, Maggie? Come on. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> did you play that, though? I watched it. Okay. And I, I mean, yeah. All right. Not That's as satisfactory enough. as I would hope. <laughs> My review on that game as well. It's like, yeah, yeah, I mean, dot, dot, dot. it exists. <laughs> I mean, it's so I sad. It still I hurts me. Really like it. I thought I liked it. It was okay from, yeah. from watching because I watched a friend play through it. So my it, like, I think. As I as I separate myself more from it, I think my my impression of it be becomes a lot more or, or, or like my my criticism or, uh, my criticisms are a lot softer of it because I'm a lot further removed from the emotional response. Uh, but yeah, it is still just a oh, if only if only X Y and Z it's, could have been improved. Just, but then the the like the bird whatever his name is like i just can't get over how many weird ass buggy shit with things they had mm -hmm. with that like the yeah. gameplay was revolved around it and it was so buggy and i was just like oh i can just see the frustration in my friend playing it and i'm just like oh yeah. why when you have that being like the one of the core elements of gameplay it just drives me nuts like i yep. can't imagine from like a game designer perspective being able to be like i'm content with this launching i well, like it could have been we need to recoup some costs now because this project might just be canceled if not. <laughs> been yeah. in development for 10 years. I mentioned this while we were talking about it months ago, but I remember reading an interview with uh, Fumito Ueda who said that even he himself experienced a lot of frustrations trying to get Trico to do what he wanted him to do. Mm. And he had to like remind himself like, yes, this is what I want. This is how I want the game to progress. However, he was you know, like, if, if the man who invented the damn thing is having those frustrations, you would think that would echo a lot of the... Like, uh, is he bugging out or is he just acting like that on purpose because he's an animal? It's just what a dog know. does, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not a bug, it's a feature. Oh, immersion! Like, no, you come here. What are you, what are you, where, where are you going? No, don't, don't no. fall off the cliff, not Trico. God, come on. <laughs> but my, uh, still, I don't want to talk about this for too much longer, but still my favorite part of that game is always going to be when I would be climbing up those pedestals one by one and I'd be at the last jump arbitrarily he decides oh hey look that's interesting turns around jumps all the way back down before letting me come back up and try to do it again and yeah that's that's, that's the last guardian like, that's ridiculous yeah. when i was voicing those frustrations people were telling me like you just don't understand how the language works no. you need to learn how to speak the language with trico and then yep. you won't have these problems anymore problem one <laughs> you listen to the chat it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right no more last guardian uh that is <laughs> or no man's sky or no man's sky What's we didn't talk list? about no man's sky but I actually, I actually like no man's sky <laughs> it's repetitive gameplay but i like i'm but i'm one of those people who are, i'm content with just running around and exploring things. yeah yeah did you play the 1.1 update of it i haven't actually i really enjoyed what they did with that what you've done ryan why <laughs> why did i do this <laughs> <You started him. laughs> I feel like Bear and I would get really. We well, should yeah, just like, we have a lot of the Bear. same interests, but we're not allowed to be happy in these parts. That's the case. So. Oh, and no more Resident Evil Seven, also because I talked about it once. That's true. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I've 
I'm liking Resident Evil 7 so hey, far. You know it's I, awesome. You know what I didn't include on the docket is Overwatch fixing custom games with a new character on the way, which is exciting for me, but I know... Remember that, like, one anymore. month we were all really into Overwatch? Yeah, dude. I would still play it with you guys. Nobody wants I'm to a, I think them fixing custom games is actually a pretty big deal. Like, they not only fixed the custom game lobby, but they made it a lot better, and they added server browsers, too, which is pretty cool, but, yeah. Anyway. The new character is a metal horse. Doesn't McCree get to ride it? That's a good point. He should. Yeah. It's it just oversight. makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Overwatch is like a college course where for like a month we were all in a study group together making progress and like we were right there. We were hitting the class average and then like blew off class for a couple weeks and then people were like, hey, you know, class is getting pretty good. You want to come back? And we're like, ah, I've missed too much. <laughs> I'm just gonna might drop as well, out. I'm might just, as well just drop it. Come right. back <laughs> you know, you guys converted me on Overwatch when it first was new. I was like, I don't want to play that at all. Yeah. And then I'm the only one that still would. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's weird. Anyway, I'll have to exchange battle, battle that accounts. I'll play with you, Nick. Okay. Good. <laughs> you won't be alone anymore. You gotta play the division <laughs> with him too, though. He's gonna. You don't. You don't have to play the division, but I wouldn't mind it. <laughs> I actually, I had fun playing the division, but I, I liked it more when I was playing with a group of people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially in like the that one, whatever that dark area is that you're supposed to go into. Mm -hmm. The like, Central Park area. Yeah, because it's like if you're if you're not with people, you just get wrecked. Yep. Or you just befriend people and then you take all their stuff. Yeah. You gotta take down <laughs> the biggest, baddest dude in the yard. You gotta fuck him up and then you're the king. All right. On to everybody's favorite segment. It's uh, Ask Roundtable. Ask Roundtable, the weekly segment where you send your questions into roundtableyt at gmail.com and we do our best to answer them. This one comes from one of our patrons. It's Scrotty119. Hey, Scrotty. Uh, it says, with the Oscars just having passed, here's a few movie-related questions. Uh, I, I cherry-picked my favorite among them, which was, do video games make better movies, or do movies make better video games? And here's a couple of other uh, things he asked as well. He said, uh, what do you think is the best crossover between a video game and a movie? And uh, which video game do you guys think has the potential to be made into a movie and to be taken seriously? Uh, he also, for Ryan, said for uh, Nick's Weird Games theme song, he'd like a parody of the Fresh, Pr Fresh Prince of Bel-Air theme, if you can manage that. It's very or, verbose. It is. But... See what you can do there? <laughs> Work in progress. All right, so. Okay, yeah, I got something. All right, good deal. Uh, but for Ask Roundtable, Scrotty asked, do video games make better movies, or do movies make better video games? I like this, I like this conversation, Branch. Who wants to take Definitely it? Definitely a, a good thinking question, yeah, for sure. absolutely. I mean, most like, of them are garbaggio, but... I'd say movies probably end up making better video games on the whole. I can't that, yeah. think of any good video game movies that exist. Yeah. I think it's more so that most of the people who are creating the, the movies are not necessarily gamers. And I think that they haven't hit the nostalgia of the games that we love when they make the game if yeah. that, or when they make the movie, if that makes sense. Because mm -hmm. I get that same feeling sometimes when I watch marketers marketing a game and they don't play the game. I think Silent Hill might be the only video game movie that was all right. Hmm. <laughs> that I can yeah, think of anyway. That, that's probably the only one that was okay. Which ones but, have you guys like, seen? Like, Which ones have you guys seen? The movie industry gets horror. You know what I mean? They get that. Sometimes. Bad. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, it's cynically speaking, like, they don't make video games into movies because they're like, this, this game's got a story that needs to be told. <laughs> Most of the time, it's yeah. like, this is a popular game yeah so we've got a built-in audience and the cost to buy the license is going to be like peanuts for most of it i think so yeah, even when you have like thorough like thoroughly heavily in, uh, invested game developers in the movie you still get warcraft the movie you know the yeah, how bad was warcraft it was like almost not bad if you were a huge huge fan i think if you and you get super nerdy into the lore, you probably might not like World of Warcraft. But if you take a step back and you see it as a different medium, yeah, you I think you can understand how good it is. I, I actually want to bring this up, but I don't know how many of you guys are going to even remember this. I'm going to go back to Defiance, where I think yeah. Defiance, the movie se or the TV series, was actually better than the game. <laughs> I've heard that, actually. I, and I... It kind of gives me, like, weird Firefly type of vibe, but, like, not as good. Uh, but Defiance, the game was 
fucking awful. Yeah, I didn't like the game, but I really did like that that TV series. I knew one person who liked the show, and I knew nobody who liked the game. So I would say it's <laughs> infinitely better as a show in my anecdotal experience. One hundred percent better. I feel like, like. Have you seen Max Payne? By the way. Oh god, no, it's no, no, so I bad. I, I, oh god, it's so most bad. Most video game movies are horrible. Max Payne, in my opinion, <laughs> is in like. It's in that Uva Bowl level of like this. <laughs> I can't so believe bad. that this got made. It's actually like. <laughs> is oh, it so bad it's good? Does it come back around? Or yes. Is, oh, okay. There's like some weird, like, John Leguizamo <laughs> has like no teeth and he's in like a desert prison <laughs> colony that Max keeps visiting to get advice for how to. What? You know, I mean, it, it's extremely daring <laughs> be the way that you would phrase it if you <laughs> wanted to. You it's great Sold. Yeah. <laughs> <Watch it right. laughs> now. Man, Agent Forty Seven was fucking awful. Was as well. it, man? I haven't seen any of these, but I like I, I I see what I hope to see in them. I guess, and I guess it never turns out to be the case. I feel like it's the same case with like other mediums that get crossed. Um, like often, I find that I really, really love a book series. For instance, Wheel of Time is finally getting made into a movie and i'm just like dreading the moment when i watch it and it's going to be terrible but um, i'm going to watch it because i like i own the whole series down there. Nice. Um, <laughs> so it's like it's I don't, I don't know i feel like every time you try to cross platform it sometimes just doesn't work out the way that you want it to yeah yeah that was my initial gut reaction is that neither of them work well in either direction uh, just because they're, they come across as sort of disingenuous companion pieces instead of their own thing like, you can't be passionate about the thing that you have to develop on the side as a way to make extra revenue. I will say, I think the Telltale Game series does a really good job of telling uh, a movie, in, or like movie yeah. movies or other medium, comic movie, or other mediums into a game. Like, I think that that is, but it's very story driven and very it's visual just, novel. Like, yeah. yeah, it's more like a novel story where you're watching a lot of cutscenes and you're making decisions. And I feel like they do a fantastic job of it. And I think that they're one of the best gaming companies to, or like, you know, to make that type of game mm -hmm. cross genre or not cross genre, cross mediums uh, content. But I don't, I don't know who else has done a good job of that. We don't have I heard a lot the of new Mad examples. Max game was all right. It mm. was fun. I liked the Mad Max game a lot. I, I really liked it. I think a lot of people didn't like it because it's repetitive, but I'm like, mm. it was super I just take a harpoon and I, Grab stuff, and it's awesome. It's one of those open world <laughs> games that does everything another every other open world game does, but you have a car that you can modify, and you can, like right. like you said, you can harpoon people and it's drag them behind Batman. your car. It's Batman, but yeah. in a different, like, whole world, and it's awesome. Instead of a grappling hook, you have a harpoon, and it's sweet. It's I like, like it. there's a hundred different sandbox games with slightly different flavors, and mm -hmm. you really like the one that's your flavor specifically. Yep. And you get to root for that one. And I don't know which one I would root for. Mm -hmm. I actually, I kind of like a smattering. Breath of the Wild. People are right about Castlevania, though. There is a Castlevania Netflix series. Oh, there is? Oh. It's kind of is. Hmm. Oh, God. I, I should know have known that. Is when it, did that come out? I think it's pretty old. <laughs> Isn't it like a cartoony? Let's see here. I had no idea that even existed. Oh, Castlevania is getting a Netflix animated series. Oh, okay, that's what's happening. Apparently, yeah, they're working Maybe on one. Maybe it's not old. There's a Devil May Cry anime. I never watched it, but I heard it's, it, it's, it exists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the news is I heard that it, it's That's around. as much as... I'm pretty sure I heard it's that. It's good journalism, Nick. Good journalism. Yeah. <laughs> this exists. <laughs> <laughs> There's another part of this that I'm curious to know uh, some answers about. Uh, which video game do you guys think has the potential to be taken seriously if made into a movie? I want to propose one that I think would maybe work out, uh, Firewatch. And I think if you took Firewatch yeah. and you turned it into what everybody thought, thought Firewatch was going to be, you could get a great <laughs> movie out of that. Or, or leave the story the same, just take out nine out of the ten red herrings that they throw at you. <laughs> yeah, and, maybe. And just make it a serious story. <laughs> right, yeah. But I think that would be a pretty good one. You guys got any ideas there? Video games you think might be taken seriously? Would it be live action or would it be animated there? Whatever you want. I'm just curious which you think would go. Oh, for Firewatch. Oh, uh, yeah, for yeah, good question. Um, I think it'd be easier to do animated, don't you? I feel like it would be a lot easier to just accept the characters that way, but I don't know. Maybe I kind of like, work. I have Henry and Delilah's character etched into my mind as that 
art style. So I don't know if yeah. I would see them the same outside of that. I I could see it being like real real life type of. Who are you who are you casting if that's the case, Maggie? I don't know, but I you, can you think, don't need I can think of like ranger style like um, movies, and I can already like kind of visualize it. Uh-huh. But it would be more of like a love story. And it would, I, I, I think, I keep thinking back to like French drama or something like that, mm. um, which maybe not everyone would be interested in. But I think like a French r- romance drama would be interesting for that mm. game. Yeah. Um, what I would love to see is Life is Strange. I think it would oh, actually yeah. be really easy yeah. to correlate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I gotta, yeah, that, that, I could see that for sure. I would love them to try again on Max Payne because I feel like that's really hard to fuck up. <laughs> but they did. It's like every John Woo movie, though, right? Like, right, like just, just do like a crime noir, time. you know, action oh, movie. People are saying Mass Effect, and I would so watch mm. that as a series, not as a movie. As but a as series, a okay, oh. not as a movie. Yes, yeah. Please make it happen. Oh, that would I be would pretty good. Actually. I need a sci-fi like drama movie series. Oh. But can I was so wondering cool. about actually. I was thinking to myself, a Witcher movie. Would I watch that? But then I thought, no, that's got to be a TV series too. Yeah. I would watch a yeah, Witcher TV that would have series, to be a TV absolutely. series. I mean, I try to do a video of like recapping everything up to like the next, the latest one. Yeah. And it was like cramming all that into two minutes of a video, which like quick animations was like intense. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I'll let you know. Can I propose a Studio Ghibli version of Hollow Knight? Because I would love to see that. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! That'd that be would awesome. be awesome. Cool. Yeah. I love the characters in Hollow Knight, man. It, they're all great. I, I I love the animation style of that. It's it's. So I feel like horrible. that's the closest to playing a Miyazaki movie that I've gotten, yeah. even though it's still somewhat removed from that. It's it's got that vibe though. Yeah, definitely. All right, sweet. Those are good suggestions there's Thanks so for the... many yeah there's yeah. a lot mm-hmm. i mean you can take any game that has like a really good overarching story and lots of character development i think you could just take that and make that in a movie yeah. but it has to be like the right person to make that movie i don't know i think like ryan said like the majority of these projects are mostly coming from a desire to make some money so you know like, i don't think a lot of these are coming from the desire to tell a good story and i hope you know who they do. wait you know who should just stop and make a movie? Who's that? Final Fantasy series. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just freaking yeah. make a movie. You yeah. have me see well, they did. Car traveling for 30 I was going to say, they did. Well <laughs> sucked. <laughs> Wasn't it? There's like within. two, oh, two but, to three uh, movies, I thought. Yeah, no, Kingsley was the one I was talking about. The, uh, oh, I was talking about yeah. Spirits Within, the no, one that released that. on theaters mm-hmm. like in the early 2000s. I heard the Final Fantasy 15 accompaniment movie was, was not bad, actually. That's Kingsley, right? Is I heard it was really good if you're like balls deep in the final fantasy lore Uh and if you if you aren't you were like what in the world (laughs) (laughs) this is like it's exclusively made for enthusiasts which is there's nothing wrong with it necessarily right uh, this is so weird it's got a 6.9 on imdb a 13 on rotten tomatoes but a 93 from google users so depending on who you want to trust I think they made they made that game, and I think a couple of my uh, coworkers have mentioned this too. That they made this in the game for more people who have like oh adult lives, if I can say that the best way. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Adult lives, you just, real like, job. Let, you let like you get in the car, you travel, you go deal with the baby, come back. Not, you're you're good. <laughs> Play the game a little bit. Go wash the dishes. Like I feel like that's what and you just They're like giving listen them the while you're for that. doing all these things. Yeah, I see. I don't know. All right. Thank you for the question, Scotty. Appreciate it, man. And if you want to ask us a question, feel free to send them over to roundtableyat at gmail.com. We will do our best to answer them, include them in future Ask Roundtable segments. For now, it's time for everybody's favorite segment. After their favorite segment, it is Nick's Weird Games. So that would be like, um, in upstate New York, born and raised, on the shelf is where I keep all of my weird games. <laughs> This one's from Japan. This one's from Korea. This one's from Singapore. And here's from Indonesia. It's a ARPG. <laughs> and it's not really good. No, it isn't called Caves of Could. I got one weird game and my chat got scared. They said, please close us. You're cheating. And that isn't fair. <laughs> yeah. I can't. You, you like lost it a third of the way That's through. And you pulled so it back good. strong at the That's end. Good. 
You gotta Monster force yourself. Monster the Caves of Kud. Like, that was, yeah, like, that was that's impressive. a hell of a reference right there. <laughs> you gotta force yourself into a corner and then find a way out. It's, it's my <laughs> philosophy. Hold well on. But, All right. Well close your chat. Yeah, so uh, Maggie, if you're not familiar, <laughs> our, uh, our weekly segment wherein Nick is gonna find a weird game from his catalog of a lot of weird games. We're gonna try to guess what it is based on clues. Oh boy. That okay. is the game. Mm-hmm. So today's game actually made it to a number of different platforms. Uh, we're specifically speaking of the Xbox 360 version of it, but it Ooh. also came to arcade, uh, Microsoft Windows, okay. of course, PlayStation 3, and then, like I mentioned, 360. Okay. Uh, it was released September 2008 in North America on the 360. There's a little bit of a dearth in the spacing of when it was released. Most recently, the Windows version was actually released in 2015. So uh, oh. a bit of a gap there. And we're talking about a fighting game today. Whoa. Uh, a fighting game developed by Arc System Works, in fact, and not a, a commonly known one. Okay. Uh, mm. And then published by Axis. Shit. So the, the central premise of this one is that its characters... What is, what is that face? <laughs> What is that face? <laughs> That's your ventriloquist dummy face? What is that? It reminds me of the orange, that orange. <laughs> Creepy orange. Oh, the annoying YouTube one? Yeah. This is yeah. just my thinking face. It's Sorry. freaking me out a little bit. I have to say the words blaze blue out loud. Yeah, yeah but that's not what it is. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, you, Nick's talked about that so many times. There's no way. Is it a Guilty Gear game? Nope. Okay. Oh, yeah, uh, we can't do yes and no questions. I keep getting on this habit of just agreeing... To do that, and we're does it start with to... a? No. Uh, does it start with an F? <laughs> <laughs> so the big uh, notable thing about this is that the characters have a sort of a storybook style to them and a fantasy theme. Storybook it, style fantasy. Yeah, it's got twelve characters. Arcade fighter console ports uh, was received a bit above average, like seven out of tens. Uh, it, does it kind of feel like a Smash vibe? No, not really. Okay. Hmm. Uh, That's a yes or no, man. Very, you're, you're very poorly, by there. the way. Oh yeah, that was a yes or no. Sorry. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm uh, I'm garbage with fighting games, so yeah. I think, I don't think you, you... you told me it was not a well-known one, and I'm like, man. Uh, can I Google? Can I use Google, nope. or do I have to? You, you have to just you know? once you, you do, you recuse right. yourself. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to read some from the back. Here. Ryan just leaves chat open. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm like, I take, yeah, I, I take a gander at what my chances are, and I'm like, uh, zero. So, <laughs> yeah, I have chat. Oh, the back of the box is, like, completely not helpful. Read it. Uh, <laughs> it's a challenge box. the best fighters from around the world via Xbox Live. Experience the world of this game through the eyes of 12 different characters. Unleash deadly attacks and combinations with heat-up mode. Heat up mode. Heat up That's mode, like yeah. everything that it says uh, from the creators of the Guilty Gear series, which Ooh, you already knew. You're getting down that uh, track. King of Fighters. No. Damn it. Uh, yeah, I, I, gotta I got nothing out here. I think that's. I'm tapping out. You go into obscure fighting yeah, games. Yeah, like I could probably give you more, but I think this is like the amount of info that you would need to get this realistically. Yeah. Did anybody you... check it yet? Oh yeah, check out it. Okay. Of course. Mm-hmm. That's like always on top of everything. Uh, the game Google Fu was called Battle Fantasia. Battle Fantasia. Ooh, right. Never You're seen that game in my life. Not Never a single life, time. Huh? Yep. Mm. I believe it's on Steam actually, if you want to look it up. Huh. Um, actually, a decent game. Even though my copy is wrapped, I have played it before. Um, I think I ended up buying a new copy for some reason. I don't know why it's wrapped. Oh, yeah, look at that. Got to preserve the value. Yeah. Not a bad fighter, actually. A bit of a small roster, but I enjoyed it. Battle Fantasia Revised Edition came out in 2015. Wouldn't you know it? Yeah. Cool. Revised Edition. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel see... like it would port really well to mobile. Oh, yeah, it does look like it would yeah. do that. Although, do fighting games really work that well on mobile? I don't know. <laughs> maybe, um, they do, maybe they I don't. There's like a few that I think can work. It's mm. just... It, they just have to not have like a ton of abilities and mm-hmm. you have to have like a good control for it. But otherwise, yeah. Who got it in uh, chat, Nick? The first person that I have on my chat before it got cut off was uh, Exquisite Meat. So congratulations, Exquisite Meat. Good name. Exquisite Meat. Good name. Good Very shit. nice name. All right. <laughs> Thank you for playing. Hey, everybody. We made it through another episode of Roundtable Live. Appreciate you being here. Thank you very much for your support. Maggie Crone, thank you for being here as well. Where can they go find you? 
Thank you for inviting me. Mm -hmm. um, you can find me in all the places, Margaret Crone. Most of the places, I guess I should say, uh, if you <laughs> want to go find that, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, and uh, all my links are over at margaretcrone.com if you want to just gander over there quick. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in any Soft games, I work over there and I run all of their live streams and live production and uh, YouTube content. They can also find you Wednesday nights. Where would that and be? And Thursday nights. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. true. And uh, twitch.tv slash last initiative show where I play Dungeons and Dragons every Wednesday or yeah, Wednesday. And then every Thursday I play uh, Edge of the Empire with a bunch of people over there too. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Cool. That'll do it. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Appreciate you. If you uh, want to discuss the show, you can go over to our subreddit. That's roundtablepodcast.reddit.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at roundtablepc. Uh, you can watch the VOD for free over on YouTube. That's, uh, or, uh, that's Bear Taffy, Rockley Smile, Mathis Games for the YouTube uploads. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much for watching, y'all. And we will... Oh, uh, we don't know if we'll be back next week. We'll figure it out. Stay tuned on Twitter. We'll see you uh, next time, whatever that is. Bye. Bye. Hey, everybody.